So uh, can you see my screen? You should see some sort of terminal. Yes, okay. we do. OK, so uh, I guess we will start. Uh, <laughs> no, I think you should wait for a minute or two longer. OK. It's just four and one minute. You know, people are late usually. Yeah, but I, I don't know about uh, Victor, uh, if he wants to join us or if he knows that he should join, let me ask him. Ah, Polyester read our mind. He's, he mentioned that any pre-training chatter I will edit out, so feel free to socialize before. So people, if say hi if you want. Let's hear your voices so we know we are not the only ones with a voice. David, the master of ceremonies. <laughs> so hi, hi everybody, everybody. Hi, what hi I like? everybody. Hello everybody. Hello. Yeah, Vic Victor is here. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm busy in hearing, so I'm talking, going back and forth and everything. The deployment training, and there were so many cameras of people, and I thought that was so cool to see. But I don't know if it was from us. Uh, Zoom or was it Meet? Not Meet. Uh, Jitsi. What was that? Or maybe just Zoom and everybody had their video cameras on. Should, yeah. All the trainings are using Zoom, so yeah. it's used Zoom everywhere. Yeah. In, uh, in, in case, I'm, I'm actually pleased with the progress that we have done so far with the training, and uh, if uh, possible, and it would be uh, great if you can allocate uh, some time at the end of the training for uh, hands on session. I think uh, that would be uh, best. Uh, for people who haven't participated uh, in yesterday's training, Wait, wait. Can can you use a host, uh, Silvio? There's a lot of background noise. Yeah, hold on a second. Or uh, mute everybody. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think maybe Victor was in a, a crowded room. No, it was me. Okay. Sorry. No worries, no worries, but uh, it's it's nice to to hear that background noise because yeah, like like this is just so 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 quiet and it's uh, it's tough to you know to deliver something without uh, any human without any sort of human feedback. So uh, yeah, I I don't mind it at all, and of course it's uh, good to hear those people which are right now in Sorrento. <laughs> And probably having a, a really, really good time as a um, clone community who got together. Uh, but we. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, yeah, we all wish that you were all here, man. We, we miss you all. No, well, unfortunately, we couldn't make it. Here's your, here's your video host. Uh. <laughs> okay. So a zoom uh, manager. <laughs> yeah, if if I if I would know how to uh, <laughs> how to use Zoom, it would be great. I, I think I should um, learn more about it. In any case, so um, yeah, we we've gone through a good bit of the tutorial yesterday. We I we will go through the rest of it, and uh, I think it would be a good idea to. Uh, to do some hands-on, like uh, really, really um, all those who are uh, participating and who are willing to, to give it a try, um, to let's do this together. Uh, let's bootstrap a project, a Volta project, if you haven't already uh, done so. 
let's uh, bootstrap a new Volta add-on. And I don't know if we, if you want, we can um, we can think of new type of add-on that uh, we can develop, or we can uh, even uh, further develop this add-on. For example, we can think at the end on what cool features we can add and so on. I think uh, that would be uh, one good idea on how to, yeah, solidify our uh, Volta skills. And also, uh, I think a good idea would be to have, a, um, let's say, question and answering uh, session at the end, just uh, not not focused on anything specific, but if there's uh, like anything you want to know about Volto or about uh, JavaScript developing, especially if you're uh, a Plon developer by trade, let's say, and maybe not uh, so experienced with Volto, uh, we can also do that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, yeah. yeah, and I was about to say something about and uh, ask me anything huh? a session, maybe. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's 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 that one. So <laughs> I think we had the same idea. Okay. But uh, if you follow along and you do have a question, uh, then do try to step in because perhaps you will forget if you ask in the end, it's maybe going to be answered otherwise. So if you do want to step in, then yeah, uh, do it. I okay. think uh, Tiberio will appreciate it. In in any case, I'm um, I'm quite happy with the training yesterday. I just uh, and, <clears throat> and this is my uh, impression because uh, I've noticed from uh, last year's training that they were published uh, online in YouTube. And of course, when you're online, you 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 no longer have. Uh, I mean, when it's recorded, you no longer have the, the possibility to participate and to actively ask questions and so on. Of course, it would be uh, it, if you if you watch that video at that point and you have that some question, maybe somebody else had the same uh, problem as you would have had or uh, something like that. I might pick up those uh, those possible problems that we that somebody would encounter uh, following this training or not. I don't know. Um, so in case uh, you see something that uh, troubles you or you see something that you don't quite understand, you don't quite get, feel free to uh, step in and uh, ask. So to be you, if I can chime in one thing, a lesson I learned the hard way yesterday on the deployment training. Uh, if you start up a new, a new uh, photo project with a Jira one generator or anything else, watch out that you're not using a node, an older Node.js environment in which anything was installed. So I bet it for an hour yesterday when it turned out I used an old NVM one, which had a Yeoman 3 point something installed from half a year ago from an experiment. Uh -huh. and I was getting all these kind of strange of errors. And when I just wiped it and did an NVM install from the latest uh, LTS version of Node.js, all my problems went away and I was up and running in five minutes. So for other people, if you start up the, the, the process, always check on your system that you're using, that you didn't do any, any because we used to do uh, global installs uh, uh, one or two years ago for tools. Uh, don't. Make sure you're clean uh, when you start up the, the environment. Yes, yes indeed. I, I saw the discussion on uh, the deployment uh, conf uh, training channel, and it's a, a good point. Um, and uh, at, at some point yesterday, I've uh, I've mentioned that you should always use NVM, uh, so the, the node version manager. And uh, with that one, of course, it becomes easy to uh, clear everything and uh, to start from scratch. And usually, yeah, we install new versions of node and, and uh, so on. But it's a good point uh, about that one. And uh, yeah, I think uh, David also had uh, another um, let's say mention uh, that I should uh, that I should uh, explain in our uh, table schema uh, this one <clears throat> but I said uh, it's a f it can be an object but uh, we it can be defined directly as an object but we use uh, a function to generate the schema just because uh, we will need when we generate the schema, we will need, for example, the Intel 
object and uh, and uh, for example the form data maybe if we have a dynamic schema um, and uh, something else for example we can uh, we can use a schema as a, the base and then we will add to that schema and uh, we're going to do that uh, in in the course of this uh, training today uh, but the this intel object <clears throat> uh, it is injected into all data in, into all block uh, components, and uh, we can uh, we can trace that uh, uh, that injection pro process how it happens. But with <clears throat> basically uh, this one is a pure function. It, it's not a React component. It, it wouldn't have access. Uh, so inside it, I wouldn't be able to say uh, const Intel is use intel or whatever right i wouldn't be able to uh, to use a hook uh, because this is not a real component so instead this is just a function and the intel has to be uh, injected or has to be provided by uh, by the block and we did that uh, basically because here in my left side in the data table edit uh, component i have passed the props uh, as as arguments and these props, this object, gets deconstructed here, and from it we only care about the Intel. So basically, oops. Uh, basically, I could say rest, and and the rest would contain the rest of my props, or um, or I could say, um, oops. I could say just props and then whatever uh, I have Intel, I need to say props that Intel and so on. <clears throat> uh, but like this is just more, uh, yeah, more cleaner and uh, easier and easy to see and so on. Uh, so if you want to see how that Intel object is injected, basically we're looking at the data tape uh, at, the, at the block edit component. So if we uh, if we go into Volto code, source, components, manage, uh, blocks, <clears throat> uh, maybe block, edit. Okay. Uh, at some point, we can we can see probably. Um, here, this one. Okay, this this is uh, the block edit component. So blocks config. TV. Yes. Uh, move the window a little bit to the center and bump up the font size a little bit. Zoom in a little bit. For sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. What about this one? I'll just close it. And. like so <clears throat> okay so uh blocks config it is one branch of of uh, the volto configuration registry so we can see here that it is defined as uh config blocks blocks config this is the fallback because it, it's actually possible to pass a custom blocks config into the edit component which is a really really nice uh, feature and yeah, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later how you can use that. Um, so the block component is blocks config by block type, the edit uh, field in that object. So basically in our code, it would be, it would be this one, edit, data table edit. So, and that one is just the component that we were looking on. Uh, looking before okay <clears throat> so this one data table edit it will be so it becomes like uh, let's see block 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 this right and this one gets all the props from uh, uh, from this parent component so we can further trace down so <clears throat> By doing so, block and by passing this props, and we are looking here at a class-based component. 
where we are passing all of the current component props to this block component. And um, among those components, uh, among those props will be inject Intel, which uh, injects the Intel object. And that one uh, allows uh, strings to appear as translated inside uh, the rendered output. Uh, <coughs> one, uh, one little uh, tip and trick, let's say, uh, because it, it is quite strange, let's say in uh, JS6, when you have this, um, when you're, you're um, rendering or you're using a component, first of all, you have to, you have to use the, let's say JS6 uh, syntax, this sort of XML syntax, right? Uh, but you, you can, and you are, absolutely forced to declare that uh, that um, component name in uppercase because that's how uh, react recognizes uh, components so for example uh, in case you pass down uh, a component as a prop into another uh, component um, so let's let's say that in this component i would receive a component called i don't know let's say header component, right? It would be a prop. If I want to use that component somehow, I need to do something like const header component is header component, and then use that component like, like so. Header component and then, yeah, select it. I, I, can, I can just pass whatever. Uh, is here. <clears throat> and uh, here comes the strange part. Uh, what, what do you do, for example, if you want to have a, a dynamic component, uh, something that, that's rendered as H1, let's say, or head, headline one or headline two or whatever you want. You can actually do something like this. So you can, you can declare a, a constant with a, we, uh, that's just a string, that's just the tag name, and you, that's just like this, and this would actually work. So you could have something like, I don't know, some text here, and, and that would work. Yeah, React is strange, but strange and uh, nice, I guess, I think. Okay, so, um, Getting back to where uh, we left last time, sorry for switching screens. I'm just, yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's. DB, yes. move, move the window to the left because. Like, like so? Uh, yes. Okay. You're kidding me. <laughs> No, if you have the chat open, then the video will overlap with the browser. Okay. okay. So this is safer. Okay. Um, is this uh, is this fine if I leave it like this? Okay. I'll assume yes. So um, let's uh, let's quickly go through what we have covered yesterday. Uh, so we are at uh, chapter five. I didn't go. Uh, <clears throat> I, did, I didn't really go uh, into the overview of Volto because I think that's uh, pretty familiar. Uh, we did the bootstrap. We bootstrapped the add-on. Uh, briefly talked about Mrs. Dev. Uh, then briefly talked about uh, the the necessity of adding. Uh, add-ons as a workspace in case we develop the add-on and it has uh, third-party dependencies and then and then 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 loading the add-on and that's needed because um, Volto needs to know when it should load the uh, when it should execute the loading function of an add-on uh, <clears throat> the add-on possibilities and we've mentioned that uh, they they have absolute power over 
uh, Volto, just like uh, in Plone and just like um, the Volto project. We <clears throat> covered a little bit um, the add-on, the, how, the way the configuration loads, and that is uh, Volto declares first the configuration, uh, then each add-on that, that is being loaded by Volto uh, has a chance to modify that configuration. Uh, the add-ons have a resolution order, so an add-on can declare that it, it loads another add-on and there will be a dependency graph created with this that will be resolved. <clears throat> then all of these uh, add-on profile loaders will, will uh, execute. At the end, the project will be the last one that, uh, that has a chance to come up after the add-ons and fix that uh, configuration. Uh, we've developed a basic block and that's uh, like really, really simple uh, process. Uh, and and <clears throat> and then just build um, on top of that to to add new functionality. Uh, first, first it was the edit field, uh, the, the possibility to uh, link one uh, one content that what that was already uploaded in Volto in Plone. Uh, so we we were able to create a link to that content. And then <clears throat> uh, we used a little bit of less to um, to style the the block. Uh, we looked at how to make a fallback. Um, so we, in case the, in case the block is just created, it, it's empty. How um, how we can make it more user friendly? And just to remind you, that is this feature. If I don't have a file, then I, I have this default kind of view, but just uh, yeah. instead of just having uh, some text like no value or, or something like that, right? We are uh, basically providing a um, minimal interface to edit that block. Uh, then, <clears throat> We looked at how to fetch data for the block, um, and we've created a, an action and reducer pair. We've gone a little bit through uh, detail on how Volto API machinery fetches content and, and uh, how you can uh, create new actions to fetch content, or uh, you can use uh, Volto's existing actions to get content. Uh, I should mention here because it's really interested, interesting. Here we have get raw content. We use it uh, because uh, um, I'm not 100% sure right now why I had to do this, uh, but uh, uh, it is needed. But Volto has another uh, action already inside it that that is able to uh, fetch. Uh, oh, right, I remember. Uh, Volto's default get content action uh, tries to uh, fetch data, but it loads it as JSON, and we don't want that because we, we have uh, text data, it's a CSV file. Okay, so, <clears throat> but it, in case you develop new endpoints, new, new features for uh, your add ons, you can use that uh, get or get content or um, yeah, in case you want to fetch content for one item from Plone that you know that uh, the path for, uh, you can use get content. Um, get content. So, that, so that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, get point. Uh, get content <clears throat> is the main request for Volto. So try not to override it. Uh, try not to overwrite it because you're, it, it will be like this. So if you go to source actions content, and we go here into get content, <clears throat> it has this um, sub request argument. And in case 
if you don't use it and you trigger get content, whatever content or whatever data is fetched from that get from from that con get content action will override the whole content of the page, which probably you don't want. So to be able to fetch additional content, additional data, you have to pass the sub request here. Okay, <clears throat> then, uh, uh, but it's all here in the tutorial. Uh, we've registered the, uh, the reducer. We looked at the uh, Redux, uh, the um, developer extension. <clears throat> uh, then um, we, we've plugged that data into a, a tape in, into a block uh, and displayed it as a table. We've gone in and um, restructured the code to split the data loading code into uh, HOC, a higher order component. And we've already uh, explained that these ones are pretty much like Python decorators. We can consider the, them that, but they are uh, on their own. They are kind of like a React component. <clears throat> Uh, that just uh, that just wraps another component. Okay, so let's see what else we did. <clears throat> uh, we've and we've started to uh, look at how we can use a client side schemas to uh, quickly build the settings sidebar for blocks. <clears throat> Because uh, that's uh, that's a lot more easier and uh, to develop to maintain along the along the future and so on. <clears throat> and of course, there's uh, the widget resolution mechanism um, that is used by Volto, and um, this one has to accommodate uh, Plone REST API dexterity schemas, but and also client side schemas right but there's like a ton of a ton of ways that you can make sure that your own widget the one that uh, you want for a particular field is used and it's it can be really really easy like <clears throat> because you see these two have a, the highest uh, um, importance uh, like by field id so if you have a, a widget associated with a particular field ID, it's going to be the first one that's found, right? And then, uh, because this is like a Boolean operation, it's just going to stop here. Uh, and the second one is by widget name. So if you put a widget just like here, if you put a particular widget name in the schema, it's going to have a really high uh, importance and it's going to be just picked up. So yeah. Um, Making sure that you, your particular widget is the one that's, uh, that will be used in the schema re rendering, it's, it's, uh, it's easy. What else did we do? Uh, and yeah, we've defined this uh, schema. Uh, I've explained why, we, why it has to be a function. And because it's a function, we're going to abuse it later on so that we have a dynamic schema. We just we're just gonna change it from our uh, block. And so, <clears throat> what else we have? And uh, yeah, we formatted that table. And because of, of, um, of our table and uh, because of our schema and uh, the way we've tr structured the information, it's really easy and. We made the comparison with uh, the table component right now that sits in Volto and uh, that one should be refactored, but, but that one is developed in the old style uh, and which is a lot more explicit. And this one is a lot uh, simpler and shorter. Okay, then um, we did uh, yet another uh, hook, uh, which for the purposes of this tutorial could have been avoided, but I really, really, think that that is the way to go. That is uh, how, when developing add-ons, uh, add that's how you should uh, also structure your code. Try to uh, put the rendering part of the component 
in a, in, in a component and a lot of the reusable logic separated into something else, another component an HOC, a hook or anything, but just separated. And uh, there is a rec recent uh, block that we, we've contributed to Volto, the, the, the search block, which can serve as, um, as a sort of more modern style of programming uh, for Volto. And that one also uses the same uh, uh, pattern of uh, splitting the logic into uh, into hooks and then just leaving the presentation parts uh, to the JS6 component. Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, we just split it up everything. Um, here we are using inline form, and I think uh, this should be mentioned. Uh, the inline form is just uh, more or less a sch schema renderer. And I, I, I think, I don't know, Victor, maybe you can uh, uh, confirm or not. At some point I saw that uh, there is a schema renderer in, uh, in Volto or in uh, your code at uh, Kit Concept. Were you uh, using it in the same manner or? Yes, but we, we deprecate it. So we are using always uh, the blocks that are form in fact, okay, the inline yeah. form. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the inline form is the basic uh, schema renderer, but uh, for blocks, we should actually use blocks data form. Uh, for, the for this tutorial, I didn't want to go into uh, directly using blocks data form. Just let's build step by step. We will use it later on. Um, but the idea is inline form is the schema run, the, the, the most basic form. And we also have another flavor of uh, a form that is integrated with blocks. And that one, basically, it can allow add-ons to further offer variations uh, to a block. So uh, for example, if I'm going to look into Volto, into the configuration, into blocks. Um, and I will look for variation, variation like so, the listing block, <clears throat> because I'm looking at the configuration for a listing block. The listing block has this uh, variations a list array where it, leads, it lists all the possible variations and these act as templates. Uh, for the block. And uh, so in my code um, to use the block data form, what I should do is basically instead of inline form, I should uh, use block data form. And uh, that should be it. That, that should be the only change required. And that one uh, will uh, will basically allow um, uh, in in the editing. It will allow to um, to have the variations drop down. We will we would still have to integrate the view part with the variations because a variation like uh, if I if I go to Voltaki concept just to sh quickly show. <clears throat> okay, a variation also means uh, a particular type type of view, right? So we we would also have to integrate the, the view part of that variation, which is uh, yet um, easy to do, and maybe we will go through uh, that part later on. Okay, um, back to uh, back to this, and we are finally up to date. Let's say uh, we catch up with what we did yesterday, and uh, today we're gonna uh, we're gonna do something which is really really satisfying, uh, which is to add customization possibilities to our data block. Um, and because of the Volto 
uh, sorry, because of the object list widget. And I, I will uh, explain what exactly means object list widget. Because of that widget, we are able to very easily add customization. And uh, for that one, you can see it here. I need to check what uh, what code I'm running. Uh, but this code shows you what we are trying to achieve. So basically I can, I can add multiple column definitions. I can uh, move them like so. And uh, in each column, I can, for example, define uh, which, which column to show. So in case I, uh, for, from that uh, CSV file, I don't want to show all the columns. I can define which column to show and if I can pick, uh, yeah, I will pick this column. <clears throat> then we can uh, we we can have options for that particular column, and we can also choose a column template or a column variation, right? So we can, and you can see that there is this extra field that's being added into our form, depending on uh, which column template we have uh, chosen. So yeah, and this is what we will achieve. And we should, we will take a look at how to do that. This widget, uh, I think I've mentioned, but this widget is the equivalent of the data grid, uh, data grid uh, table, I think, or data grid field. In, yeah, data grid field in Plone. Uh, but this one is integrated in, um, in Volto. Okie dokie. So let me just quickly check exactly what I'm running. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry, um, back here, okay, so uh, yeah, my, uh, my version of the code was too way, uh, too much ahead, so um, now I'm back to the current status of uh, the training. Um, so, uh, I've shown before what what the column would look like when rendered. So basically, we want to uh, we want for each of these uh, CSV, uh, we, each of these columns that come from our CSV file, we want to be able to sh to have those formatting options. And to do that, um, we will use the object list widget. And uh, what how to understand that because we we also have the object browser widget in Volto. How to understand that is it's a JavaScript object widget, right? So uh, when when we have a scheme a schema, for example, um, this this schema when we have it, what we use it to render a JavaScript object, a JSON, let's say. Right, uh, and our object list widget will we will have a list that has JavaScript objects with whatever information, and for each of each of those items in that array, we will uh, have a schema that will that we will re um, render and we will use inside the widget to enter that to edit that information. 
Okay, so um, in the tutorial, we have this new schema uh, that I'm gonna copy and put in here. Um, JavaScript scope is, I think, uh, I, I don't actually, I don't think I'm I, I'm uh, knowledgeable enough about uh, discussing uh, JavaScript uh, uh, variable scope or JavaScript naming scope. But uh, suffice to say that we can put this column schema either in, <coughs> sorry, either uh, either before the table schema or after. It doesn't matter. We will reference it from the table schema because we will add a new field called columns and that field has to be defined and we can define it define it like so and i'm just gonna get that uh, definition from the tutorial like this okay so uh, it's a new widget. We have title description, um, which is the usual things. We, we say that the object is object list and we need to pass a new, a new prop that is the schema. Uh, and this schema uh, prop per T will be used by a widget. And actually um, I didn't realize this uh, at first, but uh, Victor uh, told me at some point you can actually put anything as a prop here, uh, uh, like, I don't know, uh, let's say class name, right? And this will be passed to the, to, uh, as a prop to the field and then as a prop to the widget. So if there are widgets that, uh, that uh, receive certain props and those props you have, in, if you have access to them in a schema like that, um, you, you can pass them as a prop uh, to the widget and you, you can influence what the you widget does. And for example, here in the object browser widget, we have this mode link, which is a prop that go that is important for the object browser uh, uh, widget. And that one, for example, just to quickly show what it does, Sorry, I keep forgetting. <clears throat> Let me, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, it. you see now I have again a button because uh, if I don't have mode link passed to, be, uh, passed to the widget, then that widget is mul uh, multiple file picker. It's not a single file picker. So back in my schema, I will just change it back and reload. And yeah, now you see it's a single file picker. Uh, when I have a value, I have the X to clear. Okay. So um, now that I have added the columns, right? I have added uh, here in the properties, here in the field set, uh, don't forget, don't forget to add it to the field set because uh, if you're, I, I tend to forget and I get confused. Why, why did I add uh, a field but it doesn't appear? Okay, so let's look a little bit of, uh, at the column schema. It's pretty basic, uh, pretty simple, something weird. Let's say we have the title, it's a text, uh, we, widget, we have a text template, again, a text widget. We have the, the text align, which is a choice. Uh, and this one basically will create a single select widget uh, with these choices. And this one, this one is, I think, value label. So I, I think it should be kind of like this. <clears throat> and then we have the column, which again is a choice, but we don't have we don't have it populated. We don't know what, what, what actual columns, what actual choices we have here. That information uh, only lives in the block. We will have to look at the block to, uh, for that information. Or, and basically we will have to, <clears throat> uh, to get the schema 
uh, and then change it and then pass it to the uh, inline form to the to the form renderer <clears throat> and uh, that process we call uh, schema enhancing uh, it also exists uh, for in other add-ons as schema extending uh, this this object list widget also has an extensibility mechanism for for the inner objects and that is called a uh, schema extender so um, yeah there's multiple names for it but uh, they all do the same thing which is take a json that represents the schema and change it and if you've done if you have done this uh, with uh, dexterity with z3c forms or, or something uh, in the back end you know how difficult it is to have a dynamic schema here in the front end it's really easy to just tweak that schema because it's a javascript object and um, okay <clears throat> so we've added uh, And yeah, now uh, let's look at how how uh, the page looks like. So, yeah, so we have we have the scheme of the columns widget, but the data column is empty, right? So we have to populate that one um, with uh, with information that comes from the data, and we have that information in the edit. Uh, we should have. If not, we have to we have to refactor. But um, okay, so I'll I'll take uh, this little bit of code and I will explain what it does. And we put that here. <clears throat> so we are uh, in the data table edit. Um, we have to. I'll just close and simplify a little bit. So data table edit is in in our Volta, Volta data table. Uh, hold on a second, just to show it again. So we are in the Volta data table tutorial source data table data data table edit file. That's the file we are editing. Um, so we have we need to have the file data. We don't actually have that file data uh, right now in the edit block. Uh, if we look at the, our data table component, we can see that we are wrapping the component with uh, this hook, with block data source. But this one only adds the, the initial uh, file picker widget. It doesn't, it doesn't connect our, um, our block with the data for that connection we need to use the other uh hawk which is the with file data hawk right so this one <clears throat> it's just gonna look at the at the data it's gonna basically inspect the props that uh, our component receives so it should be pretty uh safe uh, to also import it with file data and now I can put it like this. Okay, so yeah, like here. And I need to, I need to, uh, so now file data will be injected by the hawk and it will come via the, the props like so and um let's uh let's um let's uh, console log the file data to look at it <clears throat> okay so uh it's here now, of course, we can use uh, the components tab. And if I look, if I 
trying to search for the data table view. No, the data table edit component. Maybe oh, oops, I will just search it here. Data table edit. Okay, so this one, a data table edit. Uh, we can inspect the props here. And we can see that we have file data. And this one is the array where each member of that array is an object, uh, key value, right? So header, uh, header cell name and the, the value. Uh, and we also have the meta with the fields. And uh, basically we are interested in this part, right? So file data, meta fields, that's what we're interested. Okay, so <clears throat> if we look at uh, this code, file data meta fields or uh, an empty array, right? Because we want to simplify the code. We sort it and then basically we map it for each simple string like, like, like country. We are interested in an array with a pair, key and value, key and label, sorry. Um, so that's why we are mapping with this function that receives the, the field name and basically it returns uh, this array with the field name repeated. And now uh, with, that, with that array, we can go and, and basically change or mutate the schema. And it's a, it's a weird path, but we can actually track it just to see how exactly we arrived at that path and how, because it's uh, pretty straightforward, right? So let me go to the schema. On my, on my right side, I have the schema, right? <clears throat> so who is the schema? Schema is table schema, okay? So in table schema, we will have properties columns and that is this part here. And in columns, it's gonna have another uh, property called schema, which will be this one. And then that object will have another property called properties. So basically that the schema object is this one. We have to go inside it. And that is another object with the properties which is this, and then inside it, it has a column uh, object, uh, which is this, and inside it has choices. So that's our empty choices. Uh, we left it empty because here we don't have, uh, we don't have the data, but uh, in here we, we have. Now, um, we could have put this uh, code, so this bit, this bit of code, we could have uh, also passed it to table schema. So in the table schema, because it's a function, basically we could have done uh, the same, let's say uh, const basic schema is like so, or, or rather, you know, uh, let's say, uh, uh, column choices, right? If we pass them uh, as a prop and then we just pass them here, column choices. And then here, instead of choices, we say that is <coughs> column choices and we need to also get it like so. So uh, now, I could just do this where I'm just going to add a new, uh, a new prop column choices is choices. Okay. So now, now the change I've done is, uh, basically again, I have to calculate somewhere. Uh, what those choice, choices are, I could do it here or I could do it in uh, in uh, the schema, but somewhere it needs to be done. 
but now instead of just having this drill down into into the schema uh, we can just pass pass these options let's see if it still works <clears throat> Okay, reloading and voila, now we have uh, the columns as available choices. Okay, uh, so far so good. Um, all right, uh, it's a good idea uh, and I've um, glossed over it here at some point we'll pro we will probably add more uh, um, hawks and and but you you also saw me hesitating when i when i had to like <laughs> close the parents here because i wasn't very sure what should i uh, pass as an argument to this function and so on and uh, the code is actually less readable because of this, because we have uh, this function that gets an argument, the result of this function, which again, it, it's its own basic hook constructor. So uh, to avoid this, we can use a technique from uh, functional programming, which is, which is the compose. And that one we import from Redux. And with that one, we can do like this. So we have compose. And with, with this one, with the result of the compose, we wrap our data table edit. And basically here in, in the compose, we have to pass the callables. But this time they will be uh, listed as a flat list. Not, we won't have to, uh, to chain them uh, uh, in function calls. So I can do like so. So I can put this one here, just erase this part. So now uh, it is more uh, readable because it, it's gonna be just like a flat list. It's gonna be obvious what, uh, what we are executing and it's uh, if I go to my edit page here. <coughs> um, it's going to still work, right? I still have uh, the choices as options. If I if I just comment this and go here, right? I should not have them anymore. So it gets applied. Okay. <coughs> Question or comments so far? I didn't check uh, Slack. Okay. Moving on. Um, um, we should, I think we should, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, here um, the with file data is changed to um, to get the this get file path um, so that uh, it's flexible but we can skip this part I, I think uh, we might get into some troubles later on but uh, we'll fix them along the way <clears throat> okay so um, now the current status is like this. We are uh, able to declare these columns, but nothing happens when I pick a column here because they are not actually being used in the columns view, in the table view. So we need to uh, we need to uh, put that part in, and we do that. So basically, in uh, data table view. Uh, let's open it. Data table view. We have to, um, we, we will get the columns. 
uh, these columns, they will come from uh, from data because they are saved as part of uh, the, the data the data of the block. And then um, I will I'll just copy this table and, we, and then we can uh, go through it because it's really intricate and I don't want to uh, to mess it. Okay, um, like so. And and we don't we no longer need the fields uh, because right now they are uh, we we don't iterate over all the fields that are defined in the file, but we have to iterate over the the defined columns, the ones that we picked in our block. And if we don't have them, so right, we are checking here that if we have data columns, which might be an array, and that array has to be uh, bigger than, I mean, it has to, has to have members inside. So if we have that, we're gonna use that. But otherwise, we're, we're just gonna basically uh, use the defined fields that comes uh, from the CSV file. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's go to the browser. And it looks like it's already using it. So if I pick something else, automatically update it and so on. And that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, now, in, in the column schema, right? I also added the header. We might want to customize that header instead of uh, instead of the one that comes from uh, the file. There's also <coughs> sorry. There's also this uh, text template, uh, which would allow us to customize a little bit how uh, the value is displayed in the in the table. And that template uh, templates template says. Add suffix prefix to text. Use curly braces for value placeholder. So I can do something like so, but if I that that curly braces will be my value. So I can put them either before or after. Uh, so that's like a simple method just to, to have some customizability to this. And there's also uh, this align which is uh, the ones that the, those three choices so left center and right and if we look at the code that does this basically it's it's all here incredibly i would say um <clears throat> so the column right we have the tech of the header cell and that one text align basically when we have the column uh, that we iterate over, we're just gonna use the text align uh, field of that column. And this one, the text align, basically is gonna be the value that is provided from this field defined in the schema. And let's uh, actually, I think it would be interesting to look at the data that's uh, produced by the, by the block, uh, by the object widget. And I'm just gonna add a few more uh, more of these. So let's say, ah, no, nothing here, but uh, we can say here countries, for example. <clears throat> and we will say that it's, it's on center and uh, search for data table edit here. And let's look at the data at the columns because this one is the interesting one. So the columns here, uh, as I have said, it's a it's an array. We have two two objects inside. So each object, each of these objects, corresponds to one of this information here. So this one would be uh, the first object. It has an ID because yeah, we want to manipulate these in and we want to be able to uh, to change their order, and so that makes it easier. Uh, and then all the all the items inside that object they're going to be the ones that are defined here 
in my schema. So these ones, right? So <clears throat> title, text template, text align, right? They are gonna be here, text align, title, and the column, which is the one that come that uh, that is the field name. Um, okay. So moving on. Um, and uh, in the meantime, I mean, <clears throat> uh, Victor, <laughs> Victor uh, made this object, uh, this object with widget to look really nice. Uh, I love, I love especially this uh, shadow underneath that uh, that makes it look like a stack of things. Really cool uh, because that's uh, like an older screenshot. Yeah, uh, I've uh, I've talked a little bit yesterday about the necessity to write new widgets, and I think it's. It's easy, and but it's also important to write new widgets and to know how to write them. And uh, I've also stressed at that point that we shouldn't use um, state in a widget. And I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna do that again because uh, I think it's really, really important to remember that. Um, so I'll, I'll take this code and we can uh, then look at what it does. Basically, we have to create a new widget. A, a widget is a React component. I'm gonna create uh, this text align.js6 um, file. And so basically now in my add-on in source, I will have a new folder called widgets. Inside it, I have a new file text align. I'll just close right side, not to bother us. Okay, and I will paste what I have inside. <clears throat> now, yesterday I said the most important uh, props for a widget are value and don't change. That's, I mean, of course, the idea as well, but those are the, the, the important bits because the value tells what we show in the widget and the on change we have to call whenever we uh, we mutate that value inside a widget. Um, the React the React has this uh, way of of uh, creating input components, and uh, it differentiates between uncontrolled input and controlled inputs. And um, <coughs> in Volto, we almost always have controlled inputs. The ones that uh, our value comes from the parent and to uh, to update that value we don't change it inside our component but we change the we call the on change callback that we get passed from the parent and that one will uh, give us back our <laughs> mutated value it's a little bit like a like a cycle like a circle um, and it seems not straightforward um, and uh, for some people it's frustrating that the react doesn't have two-way data binding because for example Vue.js and Svelte have that two two-way data binding but um, I can tell you this I think this uh, this limitation is actually a big plus for react uh, I have programmed in Vue.js with two-way data binding and it's it's it it becomes a mess because as a programmer you always tend to um, not to be very disciplined about it and you will some at some point cut corners you'll say okay i'm just gonna use two-way data binding here and it's just gonna accumulate and accumulate and and then at some point you won't know exactly what state you have inside your application and the application gets so complicated and so so complex and the uh, the number of interactions is so big uh, on the screen that it becomes a mess with React and the fact that we are always, um, we we have this, for example, the Redux as a centralized uh, data store and we, pa we are passing down um, this state. We, we have 
a subscription for our components to be updated when the state changes. It's, it is, I think, one of the key points to the Volto uh, existence, existence right now, because it, it simplified and it made it possible to build Volto as a complex application uh, by so few people, <laughs> right? Okay, so um, back back to our uh, widget component. <clears throat> it's gonna be um, basically what we want is more or less um, the align buttons from a word like uh, left, right, and center, center, and justify those those paragraph uh, text alignment uh, buttons. And we, we will show them in a button group. And that one is the component from Semantic UI. So if I go to button, you see that, uh, so I'm in the React Semantic, <coughs> sorry, in a React Semantic UI website, um, not Semantic UI, React Semantic UI and there is this button group, but uh, let's see it in action. Probably here, groups, group. Yeah, basically this one we want to uh, build as a widget, right? Because if you think about it, it is a widget. Uh, disregarding the fact that there are four buttons here, it's a single widget. It has a single value, which is the, the type of a line. Uh, and that value can we've uh, we've expressed that value so far, sorry, uh, with a choice, right? So a line for us is a, is a single choice. Okay, so uh, to write uh, to write the, the this widget, we have the simple uh, div. We have this array that's defined here above. And we iterate over that. And then we're going to just say, OK, I have a button inside it. And I don't know why it's like this. I think it should be actually like so. Let's test it. And then um, it, really important, we should wrap our widget inside this form field wrapper. And that one take, basically takes care of uh, the integration with the form library. So basically it adds the label. We don't want to care about that one. Uh, it makes this grid, the fact that uh, we have, if we look at this um, component, we have this grid system with the four white column uh, at the left and then the eight white column with the input at the right. So we don't want to have to deal with that. We just want our specific stuff, right? So we want this. Uh, and what do we do? <clears throat> we have, um, I've mentioned we have uh, the value that's coming as a prop from the parent and the on change callback. And we have a bunch of buttons. When we click on them, we want to call on change and who changes this widget, this field. We, we say this by adding ID here. And then the name is gonna be basically this one uh, that's coming from uh, the value map here. So it's gonna be either left, right. Okay, so basically we're saying on change, text align, left. On change, text align, right, or whatever. <laughs> okay, so now that we have uh, this uh, widget component, we have to plug it in. And we're going to go here and they then say config widgets, widget, uh, let's say text align, I think it will be, is equal to text align widget. And we need to import, import uh, text align widget from uh, widgets, text line, text line, like so. Uh, so text align here is going to correspond to 
this name here. So basically we have widgets and that is the folder, the parent folder, and we're exporting, we are, we are importing the default export. So if we look back into the widget file, right, uh, export default, right? So we are exporting this component as the default uh, export. Okay, so uh, now that we've done that, uh, nothing should have changed uh, in the browser, right? I don't know why it does that, sorry about that. I... Okay, so back in my, uh, this, nothing changed. That's, that's because we have to go back to the schema and say that we want to use that widget. So now I will go back to the schema here. So I'm in uh, in the schema file of data table. You see, I have this commented. I will basically switch them. So now we are saying I want to use the widget that's called text align. Save it. Go go to the browser, and I will reload. go to the data table, add a column, and yes, we will have uh, the widgets. Let's test it. And does it work? It still continues to work. So uh, yeah, quite simple and we get, uh, we get a friendly uh, widget instead of what we uh, had before. Let me close some of these. Questions or comments so far? If not, I will uh, continue. Okay. Okay, so uh, you saw in the beginning that we had that uh, columns um, uh, this one that we were basically able to to pick between different templates. So we want to make uh, we want to make um, some some new renderers available, right? So uh, for example, I was I was able to pick uh, a a column that was in numbers up to 100. And I was able to use the, the progress component that comes from a semantic UI. And so let's see progress here. So it's it's this one, right? So if we are able to, to have that number, we can display the value for that column as a progress. <coughs> and uh, what do we have to pass? The value. Together, this will calculate the percent. Um, for you, <laughs> I don't know what that means. How how much it should be? Uh, data value percent is oh okay. So we have to pass percent. So percent okay, and that's a number. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay, so um, let's get into this part a little bit later. Um, let's take first this this component, the progress, and uh, this one. <coughs> sorry, it's up to us uh, where we put it. But uh, basically, if we want to say, mm, I have this block and it's extensible, and uh, you can add new types of. Uh, of templates for the column, how to render, and I'm going to have my colleagues or in the future, I, I myself will work on it. So I will make a folder dedicated to those uh, uh, templates. And because they render cell, we, we're just going to call them uh, cell renderer. So uh, here in my, my add-on in the source folder, right? Let me close all the other ones. I will a renderer, cell renderer. 
uh, double air or not? I don't know. Uh, no, just a simple one. Good. And inside it, I will add the first uh, component. And I will, I will add the code. Okay. So um, here's a little tip, let's say. Uh, my my component was called progress, right? So, um, but but progress also comes from semantic UI. So I'm just gonna alias it as UI progress, so that when I use it here, there's no no clash in names because I'm redefining the progress uh, component. And what what's this one here? Just uh, just gonna take the value. It's just gonna calculate, uh, and we'll express uh, express it as a percentage. Um, and I will save this one, <clears throat> and we'll uh, we'll try to uh, just plug this one right now and make it uh, used in table uh, edit. Um, now we have this extension mechanism. We have to we have to have we have to define a way for that extension mechanism to be you know coded. We have to we, we have to come up with an API, to, uh, some way to say, uh, okay, this block has this type of uh, available cell renderers, and maybe in the future other people will be able to add to that configuration with and push new cell renderers or or they'll be able to um, to override one of these cell renderers if they want because that's just a, a simple uh, javascript object <clears throat> okay so back in the back in the index.js of uh, the volta data table tutorial add-on uh, in the part where we have the config we're gonna add a new section and that section uh, it's gonna be like so so let me just comment this one right now <coughs> so <clears throat> because this uh, object that configures the block it's something that's <laughs> that's open i mean nobody stops us to add new things inside it we're gonna define a new thing a cell renderer key and inside it we will add uh, objects and th th those objects will be id uh, title so so basically uh, um, the title for the cell renderer, and we need also the component that will be used when rendering that cell. And we should import the component. Import um, just just it's a good idea, for example, to uh, create index.js files uh, in folders where we have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, other components. So I would do progress cell renderer from cell renderer. And here, because cell renderer doesn't exist and ESLint is able to tell me that, I need to add the index.js. Um, <laughs> there is you. Uh, there is no difference between uh, in the, uh, between JS files and JSX files. It's just a matter of convention. Uh, they are treated uh, the same in Volto. But usually with the JSX, we put, uh, we put React code, JSX code, and uh, the JS file, we usually just uh, have, mm, let's say, non-JSX code. Um, and <clears throat> yeah. Uh, here we will say export progress cell renderer from progress. And what did I? Why did I do that? So basically, I'm kind of uh, um, renaming that export 
So I'm exporting the default from progress and I'm exporting it as a named export here in this file uh, and I'm exporting it as a, <clears throat> as a, a progress cell render. And uh, actually, I think this is um, done by some fancy Babel uh, plugin because I, I, in some other project, I had to do something like this. Export the default as progress cell renderer. Uh, and we, we have that one coming from progress. <clears throat> Okay, so now if we, let me close this one. If we go back here, no longer complaining, I can save, it's auto-formatted and uh, I should be, yeah, everything fine. Now, uh, I have this cell renderers new thing. We have to plug it into the, um, into the schema. And if we think about it, it's gonna be, this one will be a little bit tricky because what we want actually is not to change this schema that, that is the schema for the block but we want to change the schema for one of these objects inside inside uh, this uh, list and uh, that is done um, so that is done uh, with some helpers inside the object list widget we're, we'll uh, see immediately. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, we have to define the renderer, right? So basically we will go back to our schema And in the column schema, we have to add this new field called renderer. And we have to, um, we have to add it here. And because basically at some point we will replace the text template as a separate renderer template. I'll just get rid of, uh, of this one. <clears throat> and we can also get comment this one. Um, and um, we need this one. And uh, I'll drop it in here in the table that data table edit. And uh, we at some point we will uh, also um, check what it does. Uh, yeah, we need to also import the config. Uh, the config is, is accessible as a, as a global import, uh, which is really nice. And basically by the, time, by the time this code executes, this config object will be uh, resolved and it will, it will have all the configuration already applied because basically this config object here is the one that is also passed here. Uh, and it's being mutated here, right? But by the time, by the time um, this code is executed, the configuration will be, let's say, finalized. <coughs> Okay, so now uh, this tweak schema, uh, let's see how we use that one. Um, okay, so it appears that we should, we should replace this, uh, this line with this one. So let's see, table pro, 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 pro. We, can, we can replace this part with the one below like so okay so now um we have a separate function it it gets a schema as an argument and that schema is the one that we already built here 
And because in that uh, tweak schema function, which we'll uh, look uh, right away, we're gonna need the data on the file data. We pass, it, we pass them as the arguments. Now, if we look at uh, what this uh, tweak schema does, let's arrange a little bit the screen so that we can, we can, uh, yeah, we can put files side by side. I'll go uh, split the screen and we can look at the schema. <clears throat> okay, so the columns field, we say that uh, it's schema properties columns, right? So the column scheme, uh, so table schema, that's the schema, uh, properties and columns. So basically this one, that's the columns field here. Then we say column schema, it's basically this object. We have it here. <clears throat> now um, we're gonna get the columns from the file data. That's the ones that, that we have passed here. And we will, um, yeah, uh, okay. So th this part was, we've already, let's say, optimized that one by by doing this part here. So maybe we can uh, we can drop this part. Let's see, yeah. We can safely drop that part. And then we look for the defined uh, cell renderers, the ones that we, we've defined in our blocks config uh, configuration. The one that, uh, let, me, let me open it. Yeah, uh, here. So I'm looking uh, on my right side. So everything, everything here, right, is the index.js of the of the add-on. And in that file, I'm defining the data table, uh, configure the, the the block configuration for the data table block, and we have the cell renderers inside. And in that cell renders object, we have some um, some templates. Let's call them like like so. So basic basically that's an object. So this one, this one is an object. To be able to uh, make that into a selection drop down, we have to iterate over the keys, and we have to uh, define a list with two items key and value. So it would be uh, object keys of cell renderer. That's the Java, JavaScript method to iterate over the keys of an object. Uh, we map them with, we take each key and we return uh, an, an two items array. The first item is the key and the second item is the title, key label. And that's, uh, that's what we need to to define the choices here. <clears throat> and now, um, basically, in this one, in the columns field, uh, it would be, it would be here, um, here. Uh, this one would, uh, it would have, in principle, a new prop, and this one, this prop will be. Um, let me check columns field. Yeah. No, not this one. Uh, here. Here in the in this one. <coughs> This prop would be used by um, by the object uh, list widget, and it will be called for each of the objects inside that array, each, each of the schemas instances. Let's let's say uh, inside that array. So basically, and that's a little bit tricky. Uh, I, <laughs> at least I remember uh, when I've developed it, it was a little bit tricky. <clears throat> Because if you have multiple columns like so, 
you don't want to mutate the, the, mutate, uh, the schema. You want to mutate a copy of that schema because if I, if I will uh, pick, for example, the text template is going to add the new field, but it needs to add it for this particular object, for the schema uh, used by this particular object because this one will have something else, right? So uh, this schema extender, it's going to be written in here and it will be defined as a function that gets the schema and that's the inner object schema. It gets the data and we will look up the, the extension and uh, okay, that's, a, that's a, another mechanism. <clears throat> and uh, we will use uh, the, the extension defined by, by their cell renderer. And the text template has that extension. So if the cell renderer defines an extension, uh, we will call that extension with the schema. Otherwise, we, uh, we return the schema unchanged. And that schema will be this column schema. Uh, let's let's take the code for the text template renderer because that one has the schema uh, extender defined. And that one is a little bit uh, more complex because it adds the Okay, so we have text template not j6. <clears throat> okay, so what do we do? Um, we need we need the renderer, uh, and that is we have defined it as a simple property. It gets the column name. It, it gets the value. Uh, actually, not the column name, but the column data, the column definition. Uh, and basically, we either use the text template field from that column definition, or we return uh, the value. And because uh, this this function is JavaScript, uh, it's a JavaScript function, and this is JavaScript, we are able to add a new field inside that object. And that's just for simplification. It could have been, uh, it could have been a separate export uh like this and that would that wouldn't matter but if we keep it like so then we only need to import text template renderer and the schema extender from here uh, we just have a, a simple reference to that and i'll show you how how to use oh yeah i already have the code here so back in uh back in the index no not this one back in the index uh, file so that's the main index file for the add-on if i activate this one i'm gonna have to also import the text template renderer you see that i'm i'm defining now the view the the, the component that will render my column value but I'm also defining the schema extender, which is the, fun the function defined in the text template renderer that will uh, extend the schema used for this column. And this uh, that's why I said that we, 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 we will only use uh, this one. Uh, the, the, the fact that it's added as a property to this text template uh, renderer function just as a shortcut not to have to import yet another uh, export and you, you can imagine that uh, you will have maybe multiple schema extenders and they are going to have the same name or you will have to you know to to you will have naming issues basically and uh, as victor says that it's one of the hardest problems it's just easier to avoid and uh, now we have to go back into the index.js and then export text template renderer. Sorry, uh, I have this mic in front of me. I don't see the keyword. I So text template renderer from text template renderer, like so. Now it's called text template. Okay. 
I'm just gonna close that one. And then <clears throat> now we can look exactly what the schema extender does. Okay, so this one uh, in the text template renderer, the schema extender, it's gonna get the schema, it will get the data, and uh, basically we will, uh, that data will be the data for uh, this column. So um, if, if the renderer, if the chosen renderer is not text template, we're just gonna refuse to, to do anything else except return schema but otherwise we have to clone it because as i as i said we could have multiple uh, multiple um, columns and we are dealing with javascript objects so if we are mutating we are in the in the danger of you know affecting something that is not belonging to this column definition so that's why we are cloning the schema. We we use clone dip from Lodash for that. Then we are going, going, just gonna add this new uh, text field and we're gonna push it to the field set. <clears throat> okay. And um, now, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, when we wrote uh, this tutorial, um, this, uh, I, the uh, schema-based editing and so on, they were quite uh, young, quite new in Volto. Uh, in the meantime, we've added uh, an extension field, an extension mechanism to blocks. It wouldn't directly apply to this type of, uh, of thing that we're building because that extension mechanism is for that variation because we are actually building a variation that for us for a column. So the variation mechanism uh, provided by Volto is dedicated to blocks, to, to the bigger uh, data, to the block data, not to one of the, one of the smaller things inside that block. Uh, but maybe we can uh, think of restructuring this code and making it uh, more in tune with, uh, with what we have in Volto right now. Maybe, yeah, that's a, that's a reason to participate in next year's training, Volto add-ons, who knows? Maybe we'll, uh, we'll have time to <clears throat> prepare that. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, this one, uh, this little bit should be updated. Maybe David, you can uh, make a note because it has a, uh, a reference to flat object list, which which is uh, the old name for uh, the object list widget. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, now we have the format. It is able to uh, to to toggle between uh, the different. Uh, the, uh, types of templates. And if I pick the text template, you see that basically it mutates the schema and it is able to do so. So basically you see this schema here is not mutated. This one is mutated, it has a new field. So that mutation has been done by this schema extender function. So this one is the one that added this new text field temp, uh, text template and this schema extender function. So this one here, it's gonna be the one that is defined here. So in the columns field, the schema extender, it's gonna be a function that looks up the cell renderer if it has defined the schema extender. And if that schema extender is defined based on the data that for the renderer that's chosen, uh, it's gonna execute that extender. So, uh, so basically, yeah, uh, homework. <laughs> the, the, yeah, you, you, you can take this code and pick it apart uh, at your leisure, but I'm, I'm sorry. But the, 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 the result is quite, quite uh, let's say, quite impressive. The fact that we are uh, able to 
to have this dynamic schemas and we are able to quickly uh, define uh, how we how we do things and um, we are using this this sort of code we are, we are using this sort of mechanism in a lot of uh, our client projects uh, and they have uh, allowed us to really really quickly move and and uh, do all sorts of things and for example uh, let me show you from one of our demo websites uh, because it's yeah well <laughs> i'm not sure yeah hold on because it will work we are in the process of updating to volto 14 and that's uh, that's plus six so uh, if i add the page here and inside that page i will add maybe here it's gonna be this block the image cards and in the display uh, well it doesn't have a lot <clears throat> but you can see for example that uh, we use uh, this uh, this image uh, uh, this object list widget um, and we've also used it i think for you know the biodiversity website uh, in several places let me pick a country here um, for example this sort of data table it would it would allow us to pick the columns that we want and uh, yeah like here as well uh, it uses uh, a similar mechanism uh, and basically everywhere so trust me it makes uh, it makes for great uh, use cases okay now um, we have to to uh, we have the editing we have we are able to pick between the different templates and we are able to uh, have the text template uh, mechanism and this one continues to work which is great but uh if we pick the progress it's not being actually used right so we have to go back and in the data table view we have to basically when we render the cell here we we have to use the renderer and for that part <clears throat> let's look a little bit here okay so uh, just to make things simple because otherwise we will have a lot of uh, logic inside here uh, we will add a new component that's just gonna render a cell and uh, <clears throat> import config from clone volto registry we quickly go like that so this cell will receive the column the, uh, the column definition and the value uh, that corresponds to that uh, column coming from the file data and we're gonna look up so this renderer is gonna be the name of the uh, view template the, the name of of the cell renderer extension and it's gonna look up inside the voto config so in the cell renderers it's going to be the name and it's going to use the view component so back into in, into the index let me save this so i can i can close it so back i'm i'm in the index file of uh, of my add-on uh, and i should put the code side by side yeah, here like so okay <clears throat> so config blocks blocks config da, 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 this one and then we have view right so that would be cell renderers 
renderer would be one of these names like text template and then we would have a key like view and the component so now this one you see it's it's a constant it has to have uh, an uppercase name because it's a dynamic let's say look up looked up component <clears throat> and now when we use it here it's just gonna be this component here so we will uh, we will uh, use it we pass what do we pass we pass the column we pass the value and that's it and um if we don't have because for example um yeah, we might we might decide, for example, that we we only care about the schema extender for one of these renderers. It can uh, it it doesn't have to have a particular uh, view template. Uh, for that case, we will just uh, you see we have the default uh, the default fallback passed here. Anyway, that's uh, that that's just you know when you start developing this you arrive at these just in in a natural way and then we have to use the cell so <clears throat> in the data table view let's see if we can quickly figure it out that would be cell column would be uh, call column I think <laughs> but who knows and the value would be uh, uh, i think it's uh, oh call, call like so and i would have to close the tag and let me just quickly double check with the tutorial uh okay so I will just copy this, not to uh, run into our troubles, and delete this one. Uh, basically, so I, I got the value wrong, almost right, because there is an, an extra case where uh, if we don't have a, a column defined, we want to fall back, and I didn't get uh, I didn't get the column correctly because it's just call. Okay. Okay, okay, let's see what we have. Okay, so the progress uh, templates is now used. And if we would pick one uh, appropriate column, the one that's appropriate for progress, we can see that uh, it is uh, it's uh, done like that, like so. And uh, for example, it might be an exercise if you want to pick it up. Uh, that uh, <clears throat> I like, like there's a ton of use cases, but imagine that I might want to change the color for this uh, percentage. Uh, so right now I can go and hard code it. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so here I might say color is red, like like this. You see, it changed. But um, maybe I want when when I'm in the format, the progress. Maybe I want to have a widget that allows me to pick a color. Uh, or maybe I can even go further and say. Um, I want to have dynamic colors. I want to, I want to say, okay, if it's between zero and twenty-five percent, then I have this, uh, this color. If it's uh, above twenty-five percent, let's say between twenty-five and fifty, I have uh, yellow. If before I had red, who knows where? Let's say we're tracking uh, COVID vaccination rates, uh, and um, there is one add-on, the Volto objects the object widget uh, and this uh, add-on actually had the code for the object list that we have used it, it was this flat, flat list object in the meantime we moved it to volto so don't go 
to this add-on just for this widget. Vault already has it. Uh, but there is another uh, widget, this one, the mapping widget, and that could be used for that use case. Like we could we could define uh, basically it would be a dictionary. We would have ranges. We I would have zero twenty five, and I would be able to pick a color, and uh, twenty five fifty pick another color, and so on. So uh, let's see another another. Widget, yeah, this one, um, and I think that's it. I think we've stopped, but uh, we have. Uh, I think we have a lot of other widgets. Maybe we'll put them uh, in the add-on. I want to uh, draw attention to two repositories, at least. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's go. First is the collective <clears throat> awesome Volto. And this is uh, this is a collection of many many uh, add-ons. And if you're developing add-ons, please put them here. You don't have to do a pull request. Just you don't have to do anything. Just edit this file. It's in the collective. Just add your add-on here. It's better to it's better to have it here listed than not not to have it and. It's, even if it's messy uh, afterwards, we can clean it up. Uh, it also has a list of, uh, of companies that, uh, that do work with Volto. So please add yourself here if you, want, if you are starting to work with Volto. Um, maybe you know, maybe you don't. And uh, this is more uh, Victor's area, but I'm just going to mention it because it, it, it came to my mind. We have... Uh, uh, we have, do we still do uh, the early adopters meeting? We, we didn't have it, uh, uh, or maybe I kept, I lost track of it, but we have a monthly uh, early adopters meeting. Yep, Victor. Yeah, no, we, for reasons that, yeah, are out of our control, I guess that we didn't have it in the last two months, but nothing that, that we can uh, resume to doing that uh, and yeah, soon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, also, the Volta Team meeting is open to anyone. Yeah. Uh, the regular one, it happens bi weekly. No, bi monthly. <laughs> bi monthly, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, anybody can join and, and um, to this meeting as well. So, yeah, in the, the last two months, we've been kind of uh, swapping and using the, Volto, the regular Volto team meeting for supply the lack of the early adopters. But, but yeah, I guess that we will continue uh, to help those meetings uh, yeah, quite soon. So yeah. <coughs> so uh, Volto is quite, quite an open community and, and quite uh, embracing. And don't 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 be surprised if you're gonna find uh, hard fans inside it, inside that community. Uh, but I guess now with uh, with the final clone, I mean not the final, but the the alpha clone six release, we're gonna see a lot more uh, new people coming to Volto. At least out of curiosity, maybe. Okay, so um, yeah, the other the other re repository actually. Uh, I, it should be, let's see if we get it uh, from a recently uh, updated. It should be the uh, Volto data table tutorial. And that is the, um, the repository with the code that, that is being updated, that is being developed in this uh, training. And um, it has a bunch of branches. Um, they are incremental branches. So you can start from uh, bootstrap and 0 01, uh, 0 01 basics, and then 0 01 basics part two. But basically, they are listed here in the inverse chronological order. So it's kind of like uh, the training 2020, that's the old version of the code. Um, then we have Starting with zero zero, we have a new version. Maybe I will. Maybe I will make an effort and uh, uh, 
sort them reversed just to make it more uh, clear what the order is. And that code has everything. So the final uh, stage here should be should have everything we have uh, in done in this tutorial in this training. So um, Volto data data table tutorial. Uh, I think it's also linked from uh, the training text. Okay, <clears throat> so finally, I think we are done. Okay, yeah, look, it's uh, it's listed here. TB, it's six o'clock. Maybe we should take ten minutes break since you finished, and yeah. then resume and come up with other topics. Okay, so let's take a ten minutes break. I I, I can rest my uh, throat and my voice in the meantime, and uh, then um, let's. Uh, Let's have a question and answer section uh, uh, time and let's see if we can uh, start maybe even start uh, doing some hands on development with Volto. Uh, me and Victor, we are uh, here. You have our time. We are uh, willing to, to help you and uh, to answer to any question that you have. So see you in 10 minutes. I'm going to need an, at least one confirmation that we can uh, resume. Um, I am back, but let's hear another. <coughs> so uh, we can do we can do a question and answer section <clears throat> if somebody has any question, and if not, but I hope I hope uh, you do have questions and uh, things that you'd like to hear more about. Um, my brother is suggesting that we might, uh, or at least he would like to, to see how exactly um, the block extensions or the block variations mechanism is used and is implemented. So I, uh, I could do that if uh, <clears throat> um, as an alternative. You know what I think would be interesting to show how the text align can be used actually on a dexterity field for you to go and modify in your config for a field name to use your widget like a remote URL which we know is used by a link yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do show... that because uh, I would have to, you know, I, I don't have a dexterity uh, schema uh, readily available, but I can I can point you to uh, to the documentation. So basically, uh, I think it's in recipes or where might be development recipes form and widgets. Um, Katya added this uh, recent. Uh, great addition which is you can have for example for this uh, widget uh, for this field right you can add the blown out of form directive so and you can say that for the special field right here you're gonna pass down some front end options and those options will be for example the widget and in the widget lookup in Volto, so if we uh, go into components, manage uh, widgets field. Oh, I did, I did the same mistake last time as well. Field is in side form. So here uh, you see get get widget from tag value. So widget options, front end options, widget, right? Widget options would be a, a special object, but it will have front end options, widget. So it's gonna be this name. 
So basically, uh, here, that's how you that's how you uh, attach a particular widget to um, to a dexterity field, if you want. <coughs> and, but you uh, could yeah. you could attach it by uh, ID name. I know, but you don't want to do that all the time. Okay, but just to show that your widget can be used even on a non-block enabled content type that is dexterity and that it's multifaceted. And I'm, I'm not talking right now. I'm not talking about anything regarding blocks. So in your dexterity uh, schema, right? So this is this is blown backend code. This is schema, dexterity schema, right? You're gonna, uh, if you add this directive in your schema for one of your fields, the schema that comes uh, rendered, and I'm, I'm, I will show you that uh, in the rendered, I mean, in the schema that comes for the, the document type, we already have that use case. So this one, uh, you see types document. So this is the clone REST API schema for the dexterity content type, content type called document. In the properties, <clears throat> in the subjects, we have already widget options. So this, this little uh, key here, widget options that, for example, I could also, probably this, <laughs> probably you've heard this one as well. That was a crazy motorcyclist outside. So I can, I can, I'm oh, sorry. I can uh, copy this one and I can, I can put it here if it helps. Ah. So, you know, widgets, uh, options, and so on. It can it can come here, but it already comes with clone REST API uh, schemas, like so. And, and that is to support uh, dexterity fields that want to hint to what the widget, to what widget they want, right? So if you do that, so if you do this part in your dexterity uh, schema, then the schema that comes for your dexterity content, the one that drives uh, <clears throat> the one, hold on a second because my, okay. The one that drives the main table and then the main edit so that widget will have uh, the, that field will have the widget that's written in Volto, and that is hinted by the dexterity uh, by by this directive here. Is that clear? I guess you have to you have to. Uh, <clears throat> You have to try it, but I can show you code. Um, <clears throat> so another option, or at, at least a precursor of this, because uh, I don't know, uh, but let's say, I, I don't know if Katya added something special to, to have this available, or if uh, this was already available, but we didn't know. A precursor of this is, for example, and I will, <clears throat> I think. Are I you talking about the new hints, or? Uh, I'm talking about the JSON uh, JSON field. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's see. No, I'm uh, this DC property. I shouldn't look into the. Okay. <clears throat> JSON field. Yeah. So for example, here temporal coverage, right? Uh, we have declared it here as a JSON field, and the JSON field uh, field supports uh, this argument, the widget. 
And that, uh, that widget is actually the widget from Volto. And uh, in the demo Freshwater website, if I go and add, for example, a visualization, uh, no, not visualization, what was in my head, an indicator, for example, uh, the, the geograph geographic comp coverage, the temporal coverage, for example, uh, but that's maybe, okay, let's, let's go for uh, geographic coverage. You see, it's a more complex widget. So I can pick, I don't know, I pick, can pick uh, a continent like this. It's broken, of course, but uh, the widget will be the one that is determined from here, but that, that is for the JSON field. Now, you don't have to use JSON field. Of course, if you have some complex information, that's really easy to uh, attach from a widget as a JSON, you can use JSON field, but if, if you have a simple value, like, a, like in Katia's example here, that's just a text line, and you want to have a special widget, you can do it like so, with uh, front-end options, like, like this. You have to, you have to, you have to, uh, to write code, and you'll you'll get it. Also, there is the you new know, um, tag. I mean, the, the use tag tagging fields, uh, and it's uh, supported in the latest alpha of all them. I can paste uh, how how to do that in the chat well hold on yeah the audio is kind of bad from you because i didn't quite get into which new widget let's check out the chat <clears throat> get widget by a tag value uh yeah well uh this i think this is what uh uh, what I'm showing here, uh, it's this piece of uh, information because it's it's front end options and it's uh, widget special options, like so. But I can uh, I can open the conference and open this pull request. Yeah, yeah, it's this thing. I thought that uh, there was no documentation about it yet. But no, I but there is. So. <laughs> there is. There is, there uh, uh, is. Great. <laughs> uh, come on, Katya is a member of the, the documentation team, right? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, some other ideas, things you'd like to know? With courage, people, nobody is biting. There are no bad questions. As you've seen, I've asked, and even though I might have been wrong or TB said something else of what I recommended, it's <coughs> still free knowledge to be gained. Okay, anyway, um, in uh, case there are no questions, we, uh, we can think about uh, extending our block. And uh, let's, let's do a live programming session um let's uh, enhance the block um and i i'm i'm waiting to, i'm waiting for somebody to tell me otherwise <laughs> i'm waiting for someone to say no but i still have more questions or no but i i want to do a hands-on session by myself or anything maybe is there any section of the tutorial that you still want Tiberio to go back to and further explain? If you don't think of something to extend right now, maybe there are some unanswered questions. This is also an option. Uh, 
in any case, I, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, I think but we can, uh, okay. So let's uh, think of an extension mechanism. Um, we can say, uh, for example, and that would be uh, the simplest case. Right now we are rendering as a table. Uh, we might want to render it. We we build the extension mechanism for cell rendering and so on. So we we will keep the table. But um, as a simple, simple, simple um, example, we can um, we can make the table uh, black by default. So instead of having to pick this option. One really simple way that uh, the block variation mechanism could be to inject some uh, some props. Um, David, do you have another idea on what we might? I mean, what variation of this block you might want to see, <clears throat> considering what we have right now? I'm thinking. Maybe this is a question that the other participants can also chip in if they think that something else might be worth uh, adding as a variation. Okay, so... Let's uh, let's go with my idea. If no ideas come, then the one the one idea stands. Um, so <clears throat> we have uh, this uh, extension mechanism in Volto, which is uh, if I uh, I want to show one instance of it. Uh, so for example. And I hope I have the latest version of Volto that has it, uh, because there's a great example of a, of a variation. Um, and it is, no, I don't have it. Okay. Um, yeah, because I <laughs> I use uh, Volto 13 for this tutorial. Let's go to Volto uh, .kit concept com. No, actually, six dot no. demo. Yeah, just just put the uh, the latest version alpha in your project and uh, rebuild it. You can also show the people how they can upgrade. Uh, okay, that's. that's uh, Yarn upgrade clone volt. Uh, actually, yarn add clone volto at 14, and I have to add it in the workspace root. Uh, well, it's not it's not uh, published, so I'll have to go clone volto like this. And I will have to also look up what's the re latest release. So tags, alpha 23, that's okay. So now it is gonna use the GitHub, let's say checkout. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the upgrade steps are because my project used to run on Volto 13. And I'm pretty sure I have the latest uh, clone because I, I made sure to run Docker pool clone and I'm running Docker from, uh, uh, I'm running clone from Docker and I, I know from Aline that uh, uh, clone.rest has been uh, uh, released and the latest clone alpha has it. So Can you put a command on the on the chat? 
to upgrade. Uh, yeah, sure. I will stop this one. Uh, basically, <clears throat> you can go to uh, docs.volto.cms and then go to get getting started, bootstrap Volto. And here you will have this command. And I'm gonna put it in the chat. Uh, so it's this one. And I'm also gonna add uh, a link to this one, okay? So, yeah, paste, uh, paste also the link, the command that you use to upgrade to the latest sure. alpha. This one? Yes. <clears throat> okay, uh, no, I think, but I'm not 100% sure <clears throat> that my Volta database was uh, because I was using uh, Docker. So the idea is <laughs> that the Docker command will not persist your data or at least I don't know, it was gonna be in uh, some volume. Or, and I usually use uh, Docker Compose and create a file, a configuration with a volume and so on. So don't, I mean, this is just a, a temporary clone that we run for this tutorial. <clears throat> so it doesn't have my data table anymore. But um, what I wanted to show you is the new search block. And the new search block has or has not. <laughs> um, should be here. I'm not sure why it's not. Let's check. Uh, uh, yeah, check the Volto version from control panel to see if you really are using. No, it's still using uh, Volto fourteen, which is uh, strange. So let's look in the dependencies. It's like this. This is yarn, <laughs> and. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Now is the time when you have to run yard force. You know? Let's see. Yarn uh, and then look at omelette package.json. Okay, now it's fine. So basically I had to, I, after I have, <laughs> but it's weird and it's gonna be on video. So after I have added the new uh, Volto 13 ver version, right? It looked like it installed to everything. And then it didn't have the Volto updated version, but now it should have it. Okay. Uh, who in his right mind does this UI? I mean, I I click on click here and it starts to move a window. Anyway, search. Okay, finally we have a search block. Okay, so the search block, uh, just to give you a quick uh, quick overview of it. Move uh, the window a little bit to the left. Okay. Okay. Um, you can, it, it's basically, you can have like so, you, it's, an, it's a block that you can use to search content. And 
you can add criteria, base criteria. For example, let's say that the type should be page, and of which we only have one. And we can add uh, a facet, a filter, let's say, and we can put, for example, the review state, and we can um, <clears throat> we can have it rendered as a checkbox, uh, and so on. And uh, we can, uh, and this one is also using uh, the object uh, list widget, uh, which is really nice. And we can, for example, show some sorting controls and we can say, okay, I want to sort by, uh, I want to make available the following sort options. So for example, sort by uh, effective date and then sort by creation date. And then I will have these two options here. Uh, and, but the idea is, because here is where I wanted to get we have the following extension mechanism. We have this variation and we have the results template. The variation is the one that's for the search block itself. And the, we have facets on top as a variation. So basically it puts everything on top of the search results. Uh, facets on the left side, it moved them to the left uh, and uh, to the right side, which is the default. And then, uh, more, we have another variation or uh, extensibility inside this block, which is how the results should look like. And for this one, because this listing reuses the li block listing template, uh, these ones are the ones that are available for the bl block listing. So we have summary, image gallery, which doesn't do anything in this case, and the default template. And um, <clears throat> so basically variation here is the one that's, uh, that's used. And I mean, that we are interested in. And that variation, let's look at how it's implemented in Volto. Um, we can check the other config uh, blocks. And then we're interested in search block something. Yeah, okay. So in, in the block configuration, we have, to, we have to add a new list called variations. We have to, uh, this list needs to define objects uh, with the variation configuration. One of them, one of these objects should have this is default to, uh, passed to passed as an, as an option. And that means that uh, <clears throat> when I create, when I create the block, it's the one that's going to be uh, used by default. So here we don't have it uh, showing up here, although it's a problem we are working on. Uh, it's the one that's going to be used because if I, if I add the facet, Will be on the right because the <clears throat> the right side facet is the default. Okay, so let's copy this and put it in our uh, in our thing. I'm gonna simplify a little bit this what we have here. Okay, <clears throat> so needs to be a list like so, and I'll just comment this for now. <clears throat> now, um, let's add the default table variation, whatever, and we say default table. And let's add a new variation and we'll, we'll name it red table, I guess, because that's uh, something that's easy to implement. And of course, it's not going to be uh, the default. 
Okay, so <clears throat> now we need the components. Uh, and the idea is like this. So first of all, uh, in our data table edit, uh, <clears throat> and this one, it has to with block uh, variations, I, I think, but I, I need to check or no, I think, yeah, we are actually good to go. So block data form should automatically gives, uh, give us the, the variations. If we go back to and add the data table page here. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'll just save and add the file. and edit this and then pick that file okay uh, now back i already have the options right default table red table they don't do anything right now so we have to use them uh, and it, it was really simple just just add the variations inside here and we declared the variations and that's it. And we already have a dropdown. <clears throat> Next, we need, to, um, we need to use those variations and to use them, we need to go to uh, the data table view. And <clears throat> basically we have to, we have to uh, refactor this and make it uh, something that uh, we can reuse. So I will say here it's the, um, the renderer, let's say. And I will uh, create a default table view component. I don't know what it needs to look like. Oops, uh, it should be here. I will return this, okay. And yeah, renderer, and I will say const renderer, renderer equal default table view. And what do we need in in there? We need uh, we need data columns file data, like so. So now <clears throat> in the renderer we need file uh, we need columns. So data equal data, uh, columns equal columns, and file data equals file data, like so. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so with this, we are not actually plugging into, uh, into the block extensions mechanism, but the variation, we've, ju we've just refactored the code so that we, we have this default table view as a separate component that we continue to use. So our code here should continue to work. Uh, now, now I have uh, this default table view as a separate component. So let's go here and here in the view, I can, I can now say default table view and I can export this one so that I can, <clears throat> and I'm gonna save here so that I can import it. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. So I can import it from here, default table view. Uh, so let's, uh, <clears throat> let's, 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 no, I'm, I'll just, just keep it simple, simple, simple. Import this one from a data table folder, a data table edit, just to keep things simple, not to have to edit index.js and so on. So now I have the view and I can create another one, view right view to the red table view, right? I, I don't have it yet, but I need to import it. 
red table view. So what what would be red table view? Let's say uh, red table view is it's a component, right? So it's gonna be like so, and we're gonna reuse the component from above just to keep things simple, and then we can we can. I named it prop, I didn't name it props and I have to export it like so. Okay, red table view here, red table, okay. So nothing should happen, no, no chance, no no change so far. Should, uh, okay. Shouldn't the tables be imported from data table view, not data table edited? Uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> so data table cool. view is not from data table edit. Uh, yeah, that's that's that should be in view. View. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now I can switch between them. Nothing changes, but uh, we can uh, <clears throat> we can say that hey, maybe this component supports. Uh, or rather let's let's do it like this div style is background color red and we will we will close the div so the code looks like this we we have just wrapped it into into another uh, div with the background color. So if I go here, uh, pick, yeah. Uh, the, the, the problem is that the table has a white background. So I need to, yeah, this one, you see? It has white background and, and so on and so on. So uh, maybe we'll just, uh, um, <clears throat> all right, uh, but we, yeah, <laughs> it's not actually the problem. The fact, but the fact is, we are not actually using uh, this this uh, renderer because we are hard coding it here. Now, how do we get to the proper renderer? Right, we this one, and I'm, I'm also gonna just add a border. just to see it clearly okay so the idea is that <clears throat> it is rendered it, it, it is saved in the data but here in the tape in the component view we have to use the variation we have to you know to um instead of hard coding the component that's used we have to use the one that's provided by uh by the variation. And if we go into the uh, documentation, into the extensions, and it says here, uh, that we should use with block extensions. Um, let me quickly check in uh, in the search block uh, where the import comes. And that's uh, because I'm not using a fa fancy uh, integrated development environment. But yeah. Okay, so this is a hook with block extensions. We need to basically wrap data table view with it. So we can do the same thing with compose again, compose and with block extensions, and we need compose. Redux, okay. Hold on, sorry. 
Okay, let's see, variation on the table. Um, yeah, I, I still didn't uh, use it actually. So uh, this, this uh, hog will inject some uh, new props into the uh, component. So let's identify those props. I'm gonna go to components here and I'm gonna inspect this data table view, data table view here. And then it should have, you see, variation and the default table. And if I change that, it should change the variation. Uh, <clears throat> let's, so we are looking for uh, a prop named variation, right? And so variation. you have the example in the documentation. You can just copy and paste. Oh no, let me figure out, figure out things on my own. Uh, console log variation. <clears throat> the variation is default in our case. Does it change red table? No, that's because we, I think we made a mistake here. Yeah, and we didn't change. Uh, it should be red table like so. I didn't change the ID. There were duplicate, duplicate IDs. So back to our thing, red table, you see now it's red table and uh, back again into our thing uh, in the da data table view. Now that I have a variation, the variation gives me the view. So it's, it's this one. So instead of uh, saying renderer is default table view, and I can say variation view or just have that uh, as a fallback. So now if I try again, uh, to, 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 hold on a second, variation undefined. So let me, I'm not sure what happened, but we'll figure it out along the way. Red table view, okay, good. <clears throat> so it needed, uh, probably there's a moment when um, the variation is not identified, the component is rendered anyway, so we have to have a fallback case. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how you implement variations in your, uh, and, 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 and so on. And of course, uh, here, in the red table, we could have a schema enhancer uh, defined. And this one will be able to edit the schema for the block. So basically here somewhere, it should add something new, right? So let's say that uh, this, uh, this block, for some reason, we want to show a headline in it, right? So we're gonna add the headline uh, field with it. So this, this one should be a function that gets form, that gets schema, sorry, schema, form data and the intel object, and it needs to return schema. Okay, oh, oops, sorry, like, like so. Okay, <clears throat> just, quickly check that nothing breaks when I pick the, vari the variation. But for example, uh, just to make sure that uh, we execute this, I can, I can just add some logging. For example, the schema. And you can see the schema. Okay, so now what we what do we want? We want to add a new property and we want to 
right inside a field set, uh, we want to add uh, a new field. Uh, in some cases, I've, I've started to um, to create a new a new field set or when I have a new variation. So let's let's do that. Let's create a new field set. So uh, I will return the schema. I will return an object that inherits from the schema, and uh, the properties will inherit the schema properties, but we'll have a new uh, field where we'll name that headline, which will be a field with title headline. <clears throat> and it's gonna be, uh, the widget is a, st a string by default, but we can, for example, add a description, uh, ITR headline, and I'm not doing international, international internationalization, but if I would want to do that, I have access to the Intel object here, right? Okay, so now uh, with this one, I need to also write into the field sets. And the field sets is an array, so I can do field sets, and it's an array that inherits the schema field sets. And I'm right, I'm adding a new field set. A field set is, I, is uh, defined as a, as an, object with an ID, let's say uh, a red table options and with uh, a property called fields. And uh, that that is the names of the fields that we want to show in this uh, field set. And that is the headline. And we also need a title and it should be uh, red table options like so. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, should be fine now. Uh, if I go and edit this, I have red table options and I have a headline and I can write here, it's a red table like so. And if I save it, come on. I'll have to redo that variation red and uh, you can you can see that the, uh, the schema enhancer is executed all the time because basically the prop of the, the props of the block get that get changed because the, that the block data has changed so everything gets uh, re-rendered re-executed that's not a problem. Okay, so now, now I have saved. Okay, so now we have the new headline field that we want to pick up from here. So we can say props, uh, actually data, headline, and we, we put h2, props data headline, uh, and if it doesn't exist, it's just an empty string. Okay. So if I'm gonna, I have to, yeah. I needed to reload. Okay, so uh, this is how you can use the schema enhancer for the block to quickly add new things. That wasn't hard, right? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Yeah. Uh, and anything else this... you want to see? Sorry? No, I, I wanted to say that the same thing can be done from another add on. You don't have to yeah. file everything here. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the whole idea. But, uh, the add-ons have those uh, configuration loaders. They can, they can, uh, uh, they have the option to mutate that config. <coughs> so, so uh, your add-on can basically add um, 
new uh, new options, new variations to a block. But the idea is that your new add-on should depend, should load first this Volta Data Table tutorial. So if I go back here and I will uh, do your plone Volta add-on, and uh, I will say plone collective Volto second. Volto second is fine. Volto second, I don't know. Okay, whatever. And uh, I'm going to add it uh, to be loaded. Volto second. <coughs> now, in the second add on, I will I will say probably that the, uh, because we want to add uh, new options for the Volto data table block, it needs to depend on Volto uh, data table tutorial add on. So I can I can actually remove this one from uh, um, from the add ons list here, and I can I can go into the add ons into the second add on. And I can, and I've mentioned this uh, in the tutorial, but you can create a new add-ons key. Oh. And you can add, hold on a second, just uh, to get it from here. So I can say, okay, my add-on depends on this other add-on. And I need to go into GS config and I need to add the new add on. So it should be like so. <laughs> Volto second add on and it needs to be in there. Okay. So, uh, so let's go in, uh, to DB. In yeah. a package.json add-on should be Volto second add-on. You're missing the slash add-on. Yeah. Okay. Eagle eye. <laughs> okay. So now uh, in package.json, no, this one here. Uh, let's uh, let's 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 uh, let's move. Hold on a second. Now I'm editing in too many places. Okay, now back back in my. Actually, I'll I'll close this one, and open just source index. So I'm in my Volto data table tutorial, but the add-on that we've worked on since the beginning. I'm gonna remove the um, the red table variation. I'll just I'll just. Uh, Cut it, and I will go into the Volto second add-on, and I will add it here. Okay, so this one should go into config blocks blocks config data table variations, and I will say just push because variations is a, is an array, so we're just gonna push to it and. Yeah, we will have to move uh, red table view. Yeah, let's let's go back. <clears throat> so Volta data table tutorial, go into data table, go in, into data table view. I have to take this component and I have to move it to the other um, add-on. I'm just gonna place it here just to keep things simple. And of course, I will need to import React because I have JS6 code here. Okay, and then I will need to import the data table view, and I can do like import data table view from clone uh, collective uh, Volto data table tutorial. And then it's gonna be um, data data table, data table view. 
like so. It's also uh, exported actually, I think, from data table, like so. I might import it like that. Now <clears throat> we can start Volto. And fingers crossed, but this thing will continue to work. <clears throat> okay, so It, it didn't like something for sure. It appears to be spinning. Mm. <clears throat> um, okay, so when that happens, it is possible that uh, we are somehow uh, causing an infinite loop. So in case that this happens, it's quite uh, tricky to, to debug and resolve, but uh, let's just uh, make sure that I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, screw up something. So I will, oh yeah, right. <laughs> That's of course. So what I did was data table view. So I, I should have imported uh, default data table, not data table view. I'm trying to to render the block and inside it, I'm trying to, you know, to have uh, yet another instance of that component and so on and so on. And that causes just an infinite loop and my browser just crashed. I mean, it didn't crash, but it should have crashed instead of just spinning on and on. So uh, the solution is here, data table view and here, I should have default table view and I don't know why, uh, like so. And I don't know why here I have data table view because there it should be, uh, it should be default table view. Yeah, default table view like so. Okay. <clears throat> Let's uh, go back and with some cor courage and hope uh, it doesn't crash and it appears that it's still working. I mean, it's back to working state. And uh, with all the options and just to confirm that uh, this is actually the code that gets executed. I'm just gonna make this uh, quickly. I'm just gonna say, return and just add a console log just as a, as a confirmation that this code gets executed. And in console, let's quickly reload. I'm not sure why it crashed, <clears throat> but uh, yep. Yeah. This one. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at, yeah, I don't want to see those messages. Okay, so what a table view all, all day. <clears throat> what else can we do? What, what else do you want to know? You know what would be useful? to show that you've added uh, dependency, mm. development dependency to add uh, why was something rendered. Maybe it's useful for a developer when he makes an add-on, if there is some performance issues to find out why did it render. Um. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> Um, so disclosure here, I've never actually used why did it render. 
maybe I've used it, but no. Uh, uh, yeah. Not the package itself. You added uh, a package. I, I, I use, uh, I've added the use trace update, but that's yes, uh, trace updates. Yeah. For example, if you uh, if you want, let me think. Um, because it's gonna be yeah. Um, that's that's for cases where you have complex uh, complex uh, state and i can show you in if i have a development copy of volto so i will check master for example here uh, pool. Uh, you can always count on victor on making frequent releases And uh, so now I have started a uh, uh, development version of Volto. Uh, because in the in the search block, it is the kind of uh, complex um, code that, <laughs> that 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 makes it worth using the use uh, use trace uh, update. Use trace update. Yeah, thank you. Manage blocks search. Okay, so here in uh, with search, um, I mean, uh, I I need to make this one a little bit uh, like this because it's quite complex. Uh, okay, so just to explain a little bit the structure <clears throat> of the code. I, I have opened here on my left side search block edit and search block edit it composes with search the hawk. So in the search block edit you, you can see that it's pretty much the same that we did uh, all, all this we, uh, training. It is block components. It is uh, it is block data form, and it's got schemas, and and it's got uh, hooks to uh, to push uh, complicated logic into uh, reusable things, and and just to keep it aside. And uh, the the magic, let's say, of the search block is split or isolated in this uh, with search. Um, function and for example the search block view is almost nothing i mean you can you, you can see that there is not a lot of logic inside of the search block view uh it it relies on with search and with search will will uh, inject search data inside uh, the search block and basically we will uh, rely further on the listing body to create the, the actual listing of items uh, our job as the search block is just to filter content and provide the facets and provide the input filter but it is the job of the listing body to actually use those uh, criteria use those facets and filters and and compose a query that is passed to clone and from that query we get the results so in this uh, in this hawk right uh, for example one uh, complex object is the location search data uh, let's see yeah so okay um and we need to import and i hope i hope it's like that 
uh, but I don't remember uh, uh, how to use it. So we'll discover, let's see. <clears throat> Sorry. And so for 10 years, I, I put my browser on the second screen. <laughs> it's not it's not or 10 or more years, I don't know. It's, it's not a, a habit I can uh, escape quite easily. So let's uh, put a search block here. <clears throat> and let's inspect because maybe it will show us something. Okay, so <clears throat> it says, um, yeah, okay, so we, we don't actually need to, uh, to do a console logging. I'll just sometimes it breaks. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so I said no need for console logging. So just just like so use trace update. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the idea is sometimes, for example, you get updated props and uh, or your you have a dependency, for example, uh, on on uh, on. Uh, something like uh, react use effect or react use call callback you see for example let's uh, let's search for location search data let's see where it is used yeah so <clears throat> let's see no but the location search data will url query will be something that is generated from it and then URL search text. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's, it doesn't it's, matter. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I wanted you to show that we have this tool in Plone and if you have some issues, you can make use of it and see. Yeah. Yeah, but you you kind of how have helpful to, it is. <laughs> you have to have a, a an actual problem. Let's say that you're trying to debug. So, for example, um, you you may have yeah, let's see use effect. Do we have use effect? No. Um, for example, let's go in. Uh, in in here, yeah, maybe maybe this one will be better. So, yeah, query. Let's let's use it for the query. Let's say, and we'll get rid of here. So I'm I'm moving it to the search block just because it's a simpler use case. Uh, and we're gonna use it with query, and that. Query should be like this. All oh, right. Okay. In in uh, no. In, in the edit block, it's gonna be hard coded so that it doesn't uh, trigger. I'm going to just put it back here and we'll look at it. Uh, <coughs> location search data. And here. Okay. So the idea is <laughs> when this, uh, this object changes, you will get, uh, you will get messages like this. Right, and the, the the information that you will get here is about exactly what changed inside the diff. Let's say, so for example, if I uh, if I had the new facet uh, type, but I think uh, this one location search data, yeah, it's 
<clears throat> yeah, okay, so you see, now it says, okay, the props has changed and you can you can check uh, inside what, what has changed. Uh, and that makes it easier to debug, use effects and, and complex things because <laughs> Uh, you might get tricky interactions. And for example, um, one, one thing that you have to realize in, in this volatile thing, in this React, we have potentially many async operations running at the same time. Sometimes uh, one of them finishes early and the other one or, or some others are still waiting to finish. And uh, our state and our components should be uh, ready to handle any uh, any situation right? with uh, half of the data only there or you know things like that. So uh, this tool can uh, help you in those cases. And uh, I know that you're very very particular about uh, re-rendering uh, and uh, rendering optimization. So I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, it will help you in particular. But uh, um, there was another one. Uh, let me see, React Radar, I think. Um, I've used the why did you render? Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, I had, let me think, I think I, think I have it here. Okay, yeah, it's this one, the lag radar. So yeah, it's this one, you see? And that one helps you understand uh, the, uh, um, how the repaints of the browser and how, uh, how performant your uh, application is. So for example, if I go uh, into something like biodiversity, which has quite complex pages, let's go like this, right? And I will trigger the log radar. Uh, this one is pretty, pretty good, I would say. I'm, I'm uh, very happy about it, but I'm pretty sure that um, that a page like uh, demo freshwater website. Uh, let me log in and go to a page like this and go to the edit and start the log radar. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, but you can see. There's a few a few instances where yeah, and, and actually I can feel them on my uh, on my scrolling because they they just stopped. The browser was uh, was stopped in, in refer refreshing and repeating. So this tool helps you optimize your uh, your application. And there is actually one aspect of Volto that I'd really love to be able to uh, fix at some point. Which <coughs> which is the fact that um, we are not rendering our blocks in a vir virtual list. And that uh, that means that this scroll bar, if I go, if I go to the bottom, it, was, it will really be the bottom of the page. And uh, if we have a huge number of, uh, of blocks and huge starts around 300, 400, it depends a lot on the, on the type of content, content that you have. Um, it will really, really slow down. And the slowdown comes from uh, the draggable live, the drag and drop library that we use. That one in there, we have to uh, go in there and virtualize it. Uh, well, basically integrate a, a virtual list component in it. Who's up for the task and when? <laughs> that's uh, that's okay. That's the question. Anyway, anything else? <coughs> um, 
maybe you can also look at the chapter eight from the where you had some questions and answers to see if it's worth uh, sharing them. Yeah, well, so advanced topics. Oh yeah, there's some interesting stuff. So is it possible to customize Volto with an add-on? Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's like, let me, let me, let me, let me know. So come on, conf, this one, and start. So um, basically, if I have this uh, add-on, I would need to add customization, customizations, Volto, and uh, in some uh, documentation, you will find that uh, you you just have to add customizations, and then I don't know. For example, uh, um, like components, theme, logo dot logo, logo dot six. I don't know something like that. Could be. I I would have to match the source path for the for the Volto component. But once we've introduced the add-ons, uh, we have to do the path like Volto here. And the idea is that, um, I've just refreshed. Uh, the idea is that it is possible to actually customize any file from any add-on. So for example, I can add Volto second add-on, but of course, and it doesn't make sense in this case, but I could add the <coughs> the the name of an add-on. I think it needs to be uh, with with the namespace like so on collective like that. So I could have uh, something else there, but of course it, it makes sense to do it. For example, if I if I'm customizing an add-on. It makes sense to do it in the second add-on. So I would have customizations, uh, clone collective, Volto second add-on, and then so on and so on. And then, for example, data table. And um, the problem with customizations is, of course, that you uh, you're basically rewriting a file. So now you have to uh, you have to maintain that file. You have to update it whenever um, the add-on or Volto uh, refreshed that file. So yeah, it's up to you if you use this mechanism. It's quite easy. It's quite fast and powerful because you're basically uh, you have total control. You don't you don't depend on an API, an extension API being defined, but uh, I'm not sure uh, how good practice it is. Okay, so uh, can I have an, a theme in an add-on? Yes, I have shown, for example, the uh, all our uh, EA add-ons, all our EA theme themes are implemented as add-ons, and that's just uh, by doing a trick with Razzle Extend, which allows us to uh, redefine an, a Webpack alliance. And once we have, once we can redefine that alliance, we are able to define uh, um, the, the the location of the theme path. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, can I extend? I mean, I'm gonna just skip over this one. Can I extend Volto's Express server? I have uh, discussed this already a, a little bit. Uh, it is it is. Uh, uh, one it is one of uh, the Volto's hidden powers, <laughs> but it's it's one I'm very very uh, close to and and something that I really appreciate having uh, being able to do that. Now we get to one interesting thing, which is the bundle optimization. That's 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 really nice. Okay, <clears throat> so um, let's let me quickly give you an overview how to optimize the bundles. So first of all, you have to know what your bundles are and you have to be able to debug the bundles and so on. So then you can start uh, optimizing how that those bundles look like. And you can do that by running env bundle 
analyze is true and uh, I'm using fish as a shell so I have to add this n as a prefix uh, in bash you don't need it although I think it still works even with n okay so <clears throat> now what will happen and I need a little bit of water What will happen is that you can see um, it. No, I shouldn't do that. I should do yarn build uh, because we want to analyze the production bundle, not the development bundle. Um, with this flag, a new uh, Webpack plugin will be activated, and that one will. Uh, will basically instruct Webpack to dump information about the bundles. Those are the JavaScript uh, files that are built. So it will instruct Webpack to dump information about, about those bundles. And then it will uh, start an HTTP server and that will allow us to look at the bundles. And because, um, yeah, it's it's a more lengthy process because of course the bundle has to be produced in production mode and then the uh, debug information has to be dumped and then the HTTP server has to start. So now that uh, the HTTP server is started, <clears throat> we can uh, load and check. Okay, so, um let's first uh let's start uh let's start uh, let's start in production mode just to just to understand what we're looking at <clears throat> so i have started volto in production mode and I can go to localhost 3000. And right now it's running in production mode. So if I look at the um, network, I'm gonna put it on JS and I'm gonna force a refresh. So I have four files, four JavaScript files that are loaded. One of them is big 2.5 megabytes. Okay, it's not, uh, it not, uh, it's not packed, it's not, uh, it's not jzipped. So it is big uh, because it's coming from the local host. Usually you would uh, serve it packed. Okay, so <clears throat> we have, we have this big file, it's called 9.4 and we have another file and it's called uh, client and we have what else? So these are kind of like the big, big files. So we have client and 9.48. Now, if we look at uh, our bundles, so we see this one, uh, sorry. We see this one, 9.48, and this is the content inside that bundle. So basically it 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 has, for example, this, this uh, we can see the act beautiful drag and drop. It has a footprint of, uh, 235 kilobytes, pretty big. Draft.js, yet another uh, 360 kilobytes. Moment, immutable, and so on and so on. Of course, this one, this, this, is, uh, this is our clone co Volto components. We cannot get rid of those ones. Uh, we cannot get rid of React. We might be able to get rid of these things. Uh, we might be able to get rid of draft, I mean, they shouldn't be loaded like that. Uh, low dash, debatable. Uh, Pacolib, I don't know what this is and who uses it, but we also have Papa Bars here. Now, this one is not a big, big uh, library, but it is ours. It's our responsibility, so we might um, try to optimize it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now, there are more bundles here, but they are not actually loaded. So, for example, 
if I uh, let's try to get them to load so some of them, for example, uh, the React select, you see there's some bundles loaded. Uh, new bundles, uh, meaning new JS files that contain some uh, JavaScript modules. And uh, for example, I'm, I'm wondering where the select, uh, React select is uh, loaded because it usually sits in a separate bundle. But I think, uh, I think we have uh, like a, a sort of meta bundle that loads all of them. So yeah, I don't know. Let's see. So now if I go to the page, it loaded all of these. Um, I don't, I, yeah, yeah I, I think, yeah, but this size is, uh, is tricky, I mean, is misleading because that size is wrong. Okay, now we get the real sizes. Okay, so for example, this one is at 124 kilobytes and what what it is i don't know it's something with date time but anyway these are files that were loaded on demand whenever uh, we have uh, components inside volto that need them so <clears throat> to be able to instruct volto and to be able to instruct webpack to separate something uh, to be loaded on demand and we see that for example with pop-up bars we were not able to do that because it's loaded uh, in the main bundle, the one that's loaded by default for everybody, including uh, including uh, an anonymous users and uh, including pages that don't contain our uh, data table block. Uh, so one, I mean, <clears throat> what? At, at the root of this is a library called loadable components. Uh, and actually at the root of that library is the Webpack support for um, lazy loading. So uh, what we, the Volto comes with some helpers, with some lazy loading helpers. They are documented in, I think, development recipes, lazy loading and code splitting. And this is the basic method to lazy load. So let's uh, let's try to do that, right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, I think the time is short. Let's keep it simple. I'm gonna use the uh, Volto uh, Volto recommended way of lazy loading because I mean, that's what we're trying to teach. So we have to, uh, we have to find the way, the, uh, the place where we actually use uh, pop-up bars. So go back to data table. We are probably using it in with file data in the hawk, I think. Okay. So this one. Um, Now, <laughs> this will be this will be interesting because um, yeah, it's a it's a hawk, and basically, in here we are actually needing it, and I don't think I've ever ever done this, but let's uh, give it a try. <clears throat> so, um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. we need inject lazy libs, okay. Uh, and inject lazy libs is is a hawk on its own. And inject lazy libs it needs to be called with uh, with a component. So um, we uh, we have me inject lazy lib pop parse. 
uh, and it's gonna be um, this one, the result of this will be the hook that we need to wrap our component. So <clears throat> let's assume, uh, just because I need to be to figure out how to write this, um, let's assume I have a component that's like wrapped component, and I want to um, I want to pass wrapped component like so. Yeah. Well, let's. I don't know. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll continue. I, I don't think I will succeed. Um, oh, right. David is telling me that at some point my past self already figured it out. Uh, so we use late. Mm -hmm. Use labs lib hook. No. Higher the inject lazy lib. I, I like so, yeah, but um, it's uh, that one is not a component. Uh, and that's why I was uh, I was trying to figure it out how to write it. Because um, with file data in, in itself is a hook. It's not a component. Um, it is a function that is applied to a component. And so it's gonna be something like I expect. Um, <clears throat> so basically we have to stack all of these. So the wrapped component, it's gonna be this one. So now we have yet another um so we we take we take this result all right so i'm gonna have a wrapped component here okay uh wrapped component <clears throat> so we we will have to take this result and type it to uh with file data as a component so that will be the component and uh well, basically i i should stack them here compose with file data like uh, i think this one needs to go here like so and i need compose and honestly, I, I would be amazed if this works, but I don't expect. <clears throat> In any case, uh, Papa Parse needs to be uh, declared as a configuration, and I'm going to explain why. And Papa Parse no longer is here, import CSV from Papa Parse, but it will be a prop inside here, and it should be Papa parse like so uh no it should be props and i should add it here okay and uh, i should pop up parse uh, too many pop and i should add it here and just to make sure that I will I will console log it here because I don't know. And uh, now <clears throat> the idea is that Webpack needs to see static imports. All all Webpack imports um, of, of, uh, need to be more or less static. There is dynamic imports, but but they have to have hints about the name for uh, the import. So we we cannot actually invent a new type of module that Webpack doesn't know. So how does Webpack know about that module? Basically in our uh, configuration, 
uh, I we have to say config. I think uh, lazy something, but I will check the documentation. Settings, so, okay. So, uh, it's gonna be config settings, and then we're gonna say parse, and we need to import loadable like so okay <clears throat> and we need to import that here uh pop up ours now <clears throat> the idea is that none of this is important what uh what webpack needs to see is this part of this uh, this import because webpack will statically analyze our files and that's how it will figure out figure it out. And if you don't believe me, because I spent some time researching this, but um, yeah, let's see, webpack documentation, it has this uh, link here that says, it is not possible to use the fully dynamic import statement. And you notice that there's no, uh, it, this is not a string, it doesn't have quotes. It's a, it's a variable. Uh, what you can do is basically uh, kind of give some hints about what 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 the name of that file would be based on the location. And uh, what Webpack will do is to go into that folder, more or less just bundle everything that that's named JSON from that folder. <clears throat> okay. So uh, back in our code, let's see, <laughs> let's see what happens. And, and if this thing works, I will add it to the documentation. If not, well, who knows? Uh, okay, now we need to start. Where am I? Plone conf and it said, do I have it open somewhere else? Um, I'll just kill it. Oh, uh, I, I started, I think I've started it in uh, development. Anyway, I'll just kill these two so I can continue. I think you should make a new branch of like uh, demos or something and put the code that you've made in this video in this last section also on GitHub so people can look. Uh, especially the variation stuff is all valid that people can check and hopefully even the preloading. No. Okay, <clears throat> so it crashed. Let's see why. Invalid leave or bundle name pop parse um, pum, 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 pum. so we are we're injecting it like this <coughs> um, in the demo I, I saw it was wrapped in yeah an array Uh, but it might be that uh, I didn't de declare it well here. So loadable pop up parse. No, but here it's it's different pop parse. You see? Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, written wrong. Okay, so let's try again. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, Papa parse is undefined. So uh, it didn't work and we have to uh, figure it out. Um, I don't know, I will, I, will, uh, I will try to understand how to write this because we have kind of a, a not an edge case, but a little bit uh, weird situ situation where we want to inject this one into, into our component. <clears throat> and uh, actually I think I might be able to do it like so. Let's hold on a second. So uh, pop, I will say const uh, lay with, with lazy equals wrapped component and then just uh, export default with file data. And then we use with lazy instead of wrapped. Okay. I, I have a, a question in the non-lazy loading, it was import CSV from Papa Parse, but here you're using Papa Parse dot parse. Should, uh, was the CSV important or was that just a name given to the default? Yeah, it's uh, just a name given to the default, but uh, actually um, you're correct because it might be that this one has to be like this. Uh, nah, I don't know. We're, we, we, it's a little bit tricky. Sometimes uh, you get the default export. Sometimes you get something else. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll learn. <laughs> I mean, we have, we still have a little bit of time, and we will just find out. I'm sorry, but I have to. Yeah, it's just killing me. So default forest cannot read properties of undefined parse. It, it, it wasn't injected. So, oh well, I'm not gonna waste time uh, with this, but uh, if I come up with the solution, I'll, I'll document it in uh, the documentation. Okay. It was still a good demo. Um, let's turn on. just in case I, I need it for more demos. Any other uh, things that we, we want to discuss? Otherwise, I don't know, let's... Um, discuss uh, about the training and uh, let's wrap up. We still have a few minutes. What do you think? <clears throat> and um, I haven't actually uh, done any live trainings for the Clone Find Foundation. Uh, I, I mean, I've done the last year training and I've done this year's training and they were both online. Uh, and at this point, I'm curious about uh, what the difference would be uh, to a real live demo training. I think it's, I, I, I expect that uh, the experience would be a little bit different. Um, from, from my side, I think ah, it was I think it was good. Uh, I'm happy that we were able to uh, have a more streamlined, um, let's say, walkthrough of the, of the training that, uh, because this training will also be recorded. I mean, it is being recorded and it will uh, be uploaded to YouTube and I hopefully it will be useful to future Volto developers and users. So, yeah, that's uh, those are my ideas, and uh, I'm uh, I'm curious to to hear about uh, your uh, ideas, your experience. What what did you learn? If you learned, and whatever. 
just <coughs> okay so um, <laughs> we are a bunch of shy people people i mean we, we are programmers but uh, we are shy for sure no, I think this year we have some new elements that weren't discussed in the previous year. And the loadables, this is something that uh, was not discussed or at least tried. The variations was not there last year and you've done them this year. Yeah, but I don't know if you... Hold on a second. You're, you're going to give a presentation with uh, what what is new in Volto since last year. Have you looked at the content? because loadables and block variations is uh, new stuff. Yeah. Now, do uh, you have new things to loadables? It wasn't <coughs> just new, new. We've added helpers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't know. Maybe the only thing that wasn't really said was about uh, the locales, if it was no, At certain point, point, you're going to have to do also some localization as a developer, but you have uh, the documentation. It's not that difficult to do. I think uh, I think the missing, the big missing piece in this uh, training, but uh, of, of course, uh, I think it would be a good idea to restructure it, restructure it and uh, yeah, let's hope for... Uh, we have the strength and, and time to do that uh, for the next year. Uh, but there's a, a big missing piece, and that is the testing. Uh, because we haven't actually done any uh, testing for this add-on, and it would be a good idea to have it. Unfortunately, we don't have it due to various kinds of constraints. Yes, I'm hoping the storybook for add-ons and Volto project will develop this year and uh, no, maybe next year, year we can also present <coughs> a storybook for this add-on alongside the just testing. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Let's, f let's hope for a fruitful year, fruitful upcoming year for Volto. I think that's uh, that, that's something that would be nice to have. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe don't be afraid to uh, get on the chat, uh, talk about missing uh, documentation. Maybe add some issues regarding missing info. Contribute uh, if you find the pattern. Yeah, share. That's how most of the Volto documentation was done. Somebody found something and then contributed. So uh, yeah, everybody's open to contribute. Yeah, and now I and now I have a, a curiosity how how that lazy loading needs to be achieved here. For sure, it's a challenge. I need to do it. Um, yeah, I think we should wrap up. Victor, you want to say uh, anything before we close? Uh, well, that's thanks to you again for the training and for taking care of it. Uh, it's been amazing as, as last year and this year. Yeah. And, and yeah, and yeah, only to say yeah that, that people that you're going to also give a very nice talks these days uh, and also in subjects that I don't know if we covered them all during the training, but also nice that we've been preparing this, uh, I mean, and pushing into the core last year, uh, uh, importance like pluggables and things like that. And, and yeah, that, um, yeah, uh, enticing people to continue uh, learning Volto, learning React, to also create their own add-ons, to put it in uh, awesome Volto, put them into awesome Volto, uh, 
uh, announce uh, them and yeah that because we need to make Blone 6 uh, yeah the best CMS uh, ever right and <laughs> and I think we are in in a good in a good situation to to achieve great things and and yeah, if anybody also can or want to help also in the core or, or submit some PRs, don't be shy. Uh, if anybody also want to attend the Volto team meeting, you are all invited. It's not a closed uh, meeting. Uh, please do and say hi and take a yeah. I mean, experience what we are doing there and what we are deciding and talking about because every feedback is is important or if you don't have you don't have time to attend the meetings create issues or even it's not for an issue but for giving feedback is also important i think and yeah and, and let's make this happen all together which yeah, is what what we are all expecting and and thanks very much for attending also indeed indeed well Thank you everybody for attending and uh, hope to see you in person at the next Plon conference and uh, have an amazing Plon conference experience and watch the talks and give talks if you have, give lighting, lighting talks if you have. And I hope to see, to hear from you and uh, your experience. If you want to write anything in the chat, feel free. Well, bye-bye you, you. everybody. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, there are voices. <laughs> yes, thank you. And uh, have a nice night, everyone. Thank you, David. You too. Thank you, David. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.